I've, I've done it. God, I've done I, it. I, I, got, I got your beards delivered yesterday. When do you want How to get many? them up? Um, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? Did, Did you, you get the it? glue? Did you get the super glue? The beard glue? I thought your missus was supposed to get the glue for the beard. <clears throat> Did you get them a little bit longer so it looks like my beard's grown? And no, you'll have to you, you'll have to say that you've been to hairdressers. To buy oh, you're useless. I've told everybody I'm growing my beard. Need the longer ones. Well, just well, there's sixty of them. So for the next sixty days, say that you 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 trimmed it. Chris, did you actually have you liked this video yet? I dislike the videos. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I never like them. I always make a dislike, and I can prove it. <laughs> <laughs> My God, give me strength. I think I might have to do that. One hell of an intro. What do you think? That's really good. I like that. Talking, taking it up another level. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah I like that. And the background's moving as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like that. That's yeah. proper. I, th I think there is a little spider or something. It's supposed to be like a, a web <laughs> that's just like. No, that was something really else. Cool. Oh, I didn't. How that. Oh, let me. Not quite. Oh, yeah. ah, there we go. Now I'm prepared. Hello to everybody in chat. Um, there's, there's a lot of you, so I'm just going to say hello to every all of you. Um, this week's live is live with Dave's Little Beasties, and we're doing a Q&A. Um, so if you want to drop some questions for Dave down in the comments, please do so. Bear in mind, when Dave's on, the comment section can get a little bit busy, to say the least. So if I do miss one of your questions, just put it straight back in there again, and um, I will come around to, to getting it. Um, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> we might not answer it. <laughs> Jesus oh, trust Christ, me, I'll have them lined up. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Crikey, there's loads of people in. Nah, you're, you're all, you're there, all there, up. There, there, there will be more later. <laughs> I didn't get the opportunity to like the channel. Make sure you dislike it. Well, that's what I was looking for, but I can't find I can't find the button. It's not giving me any options. No. Happy Ant has been a channel member for 35 months and says hope everyone is well. Our oh, commiseration. Yeah, I appreciate that. He's been, he's been getting 15% off at Spar Spider for 35 months. <laughs> he's been bankrupting them. <laughs> hey, metal, metal theologian. Hey, Frugal. Hey, Pumpkin. Patch Inverts. Hey, Joe. Hey, hey Ling. Hey, Craig. Hey, Bernadette. Hey, Joe. Hi, Philip. And, um, hey, Mad Mank. Hey, Danielle from Portsmouth Tarantulas. Hey, Ems. Hi, Tony. Hi, to I'm, I'm just going to say hello to everybody now. That, that'll do. <laughs> it's a lot and easier. he's got um, Metal Theology in there. He actually sent, and, uh, hey, sent one of our T-shirts. He's got a wicked channel. He's got a really, really cool music channel, vinyl channel. Has he? Yeah, it's check it out. Go pop up, go all the way from go to channel. Let me just drop him a subscription. I'll keep it an open tab. Yeah, yeah. Get his uh, get his channel up there. That's really cool. All right, let's stick his channel link in the comments I as well. Um, have know. you? Oh, a nice one. Appreciate that. Uh, okay. I do like I do like my metal. Oh, he does. He, he's got all sorts he, he has on there, and uh, hey, Gemma. Little reviews and bits and pieces, and yes, yeah, interesting stuff. Hey, Mark at the Critter Dan. Em not been about for a while, but I'm back. Good to see you as well, Em. You have been you have been a, been away for a little while. Hey, Paul, you okay? Seeing as he's got that metal channel, is that is that your go to music then, Dave? Or no, it's, I, I, I'm very music wise. It's very eclectic. I uh, I like literally all sorts. Really, all sorts. 
Yeah, I'd, um, oh, I don't have good. any particular sort of music that I go to, I don't suppose. But, um, but yeah, I'll listen to pretty much anything, really. You listen to a bit of music while you're feeding and doing spiders? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I've, got another, I've got another inkling now. Um, I've always wanted to learn to play the guitar. I've always wanted to do it. And uh, one of my subscribers, a guy by the name of Ben Wilshire, he's got a YouTube channel. And uh, he is an awesome guitarist. Absolutely amazing. And um, he uh, runs a, a shop. He manages a shop and all of that. And, um, yeah, it's it's bloody what he does is, is really, really cool. You need to check him out. He's got his channel is uh, Ben Ben Wilshire Guitars. And, if uh, one of the moderators could run off and just go and get that link and put it to the comments, I would be eternally grateful. Yeah, he's he's another cracking one. And, of course, um, he was down, actually, come down and saw me um, last week, uh, pick up a couple of spiders and bits and pieces. And, uh, yeah, we got chatting. So he's, he's sort of like... Hopefully in the future we're going to set me up and uh, yeah I'm going to learn to play guitar <laughs> or kill a guitar. Hey, one or the other. I I I started learning the bass, four string bass. Oh, but, cool. But the thing was, is my mate was teaching me and he and do you know when you count your change, so it's one two three four change one two three four change. Yeah. I, I was doing that right, but the way he taught me, I was doing it to every song that i was listening to and i, I, I stopped because I, w I wanted just to hear that sound that that wall of sound coming at me again yeah. and yeah is, like, you know like you sound about the music I, I, 80s was my time really so a lot of the music then near enough every record that you heard had a guitar solo in it boy george uh, yeah, yeah. They, they were literally it was just like ran packed with guitar solo so Can i sort of like uh, grew up on all of that and um yeah so hey, I've always imagine wouldn't it be cool to be able to play them guitar solos you know uh, does ben yeah. Wilshire has long hair and he's a young chap yes I found yes him. have we found him awesome awesome whack him into the comments please chris you absolute star Naomi Jones says 80s were the best is that the dave wasn't one? listening to the synth pop apparently <laughs> <laughs> that cheeky cow, Danielle. Look, born in the thirties. Oh, yeah. is that? Yeah, Ben. Oh, nice one, Chris. Yeah, Ben Wilshire guitars. That's oh, you really, were born. Really cool stuff. <laughs> born in the thirties. <laughs> you can go off some people, can't you? <laughs> I don't know. Danielle's pretty cool, I think. <laughs> um, I don't alter anymore. We have a question from Steve. Um, and it's uh, how much are the Juvie Metallicas? Uh, I haven't priced them, actually. Um, I've got two of them, and they're about nine, ten centimetres. Uh, one of them is actually just malted, so I need to find out what it is uh the other one it hasn't multi so i don't know what, i don't know what sex that is hey steve w so yeah um and then what else have we got here poppy which is hammer um <laughs> would like a list of spiders that you've got for sale but also says which is quite a interesting question is when you get the room in the garden built so once once your exterior building is done for your spiders and um, other, other bits and bobs, are you going to be carrying on with plastic and stuff like that, or are you going back to glass tanks? The the plan is to, um, to have the majority of it back over to glass, and uh, but it won't be the same as what I had it before. So... I'm looking at, um, you might well remember uh, last year I had some custom tanks made to my own design. Yeah. Uh, so a friend of mine makes them, uh, and we've been in sort of chats about making the rest of them so I can get rid of all my XOs, uh, and they'll all be made up with uh, tanks of my own design. And then the idea being, hey, uh, husband. I want to have a, a self-watering wall. So... That will go on there. So pretty much most things will go back to glass. And then I'm going to use, still carry on with the cereal tubs because 
they're proving to be really good at the moment. I'm seeing a completely different behavior out of many of my spiders, especially the pokies. Um, so I'm probably going to carry on using some of them for some of the breeding projects. So, you know, glass tanks are fine for um, display tanks and stuff like that. But there's still room for all the other things as well, because some things benefit others better than, than others. So, yeah, it's, it, there's going to be a real mixture of stuff, really. But the majority, the majority of the channel stuff will be will be glass. Chris, have you got these questions lined up? Oh, yeah. Well done. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Um, the pumpkin patch inverse says, Dave, how long have you been in the hobby? And do you breed everything yourself? There is actually another question that that term um, goes alongside that, which was from Mark the Spider Guy, who says, um, question was, when Dave was a boy, did you have an interest in spiders or was it an interest that grew in later years? Well, the first thing is, is um, I've, pro I've been keeping spiders for about 40 years, somewhere around there, uh, maybe a little bit longer. And... Um, the the actual um, I've always I've been lucky I've I've always had animals in my life so um, <laughs> I'm a fast learner though I am a quick learner but no the um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah the uh, I've, I've been lucky I, I you know I've had access to an awful lot of different things and um, and spy spiders and reptiles have always played a big part so yeah yeah Daniel more, said you were more interested in the dinosaurs as a boy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you might go a pet dinosaur right now. Nice big T Rex that would eat friends. That's what I need. Oh a velociraptor word. that's on kill mode. <laughs> um, these are these are just there's a, say more people did commented on Facebook. Although I wanted them to there's um I'll put a post up on YouTube for the actual question. So there's there's another one which is from Frugal Invert Keeper. Um, and she says, Dave, if you and camera lady could own any species of animal, no matter the rules or situation, something you've always dreamt of, holy grail animal, what would it be? I'd have another elephant. Yeah. I, 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 I can never pronounce it properly. Pang, pang lion, pang lion, pang lion, pangolin, 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 pangolin they are. Out of the um, the, the primates, of I, I would love to work with a mandrill. Oh, I, they, they they would be something cool. Yeah. Oh, if you're looking at primates, I've got I've got three monkeys in the other room. <laughs> yeah, e extremely <laughs> naughty. <laughs> the mo the mother can be a bit vicious, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, she also says, "Is there anything you would never ever keep?" For whatever reason, be it allergy or shudders, and then also says was also really lovely to meet you both at Taunton as well. Many hugs, kisses, and from Katrina. Ah. There's a lot. There's a lot of love for yourself, and there's a lot of love for Camera Lady as well, isn't there? Yeah, she's um, with, with the video that we put out on Monday. She done the um, she she ripped out the old Balfouri communal, and uh, we took all of that apart. And I think. I think that has probably been one of our biggest videos for comments. There was loads and loads of comments. Yeah, something like 400 odd comments, I think, um, on that. Um, so, yeah. And that was the first time she'd uh, dealt with adult spiders. So, normally she does slings and stuff, but she, don't, she doesn't get, doesn't do anything with the adult stuff. So, um, yeah, that was a bit of a baptism of fire, really. Yeah. What's this? Who are you? um let me just let, let's just move on to that other question the is there anything you would never ever keep for whatever reason be it allergy or shudders is there any animal that that you're fearful of no no i don't think so i think um like i say i've I, I, i've had access to so many different things it's um yeah nothing really bothers me although hey, saying that, to be totally honest actually i think the one things that I don't feel 100% comfortable with are horses. And yet everything else doesn't bother me in the slightest. I'm, I'm, I'm easy going with all the rest of it. Don't bother me. But horses, I don't know. I, I just don't trust horses. Uh, yeah. No, I know what you mean. 
It's I think it's because of their size and they've got that so much power. I was at a batch bar this week and I was chatting to to a lad and he, he was a pharaoh and it said it on the back and I said to him, I said, mate, I said, I don't know how you can stand behind a horse and, yeah. and change their hooves. And he said he, he's had, he was, I think he was 30, he's had one bad accident with the horse. And I said to him, I said, show me a pharaoh that hasn't had a bad accident with a horse. And yeah. he said, they, they are out there. He said, they're normally under the age of 20 and not done much work with horses yet. <laughs> um, but he did say, he said, you kind of pick up on the horse. He said, and there is horses out there that he will not work with because of that. Yeah. Um, crazy. Yeah, there are some, there's some dodgy ones. How, how would you feel about being in, in the same room as one of the bigger venomous snakes like a cobra? I don't mind them. No, they're all right. I've, I've worked with many of them. So, the um, yeah, venomous stuff don't bother me. That's all. Um, I used to do quite a bit with that sort of stuff. So, it's, it's all really enjoyable. But yeah, I, I like all of that. I think it's... Um, you know, I think I think the only the only people that really end up getting in trouble are people that are nervous. And if you're already nervous, then you perhaps ought to think about you know whether you're in the right place or not. You know, and I think it's um, um unfortunately there's a, there's an awful lot of bravado mixed around venomous stuff, and uh, the vast majority of venomous stuff isn't that bad to deal with. You know, as long as you follow sort of simple rules, then there, there is no harm, you know, there, there's no um, major risk, you know, that, and this is the problem. This is what you, people need to work out. There is a risk because if you get bitten, then obviously it can end badly. Um, and there's all sorts of things that can happen if you get bitten. But that being said, if you follow the simple rules, there's no reason why you will get bitten. So, you know, it's one of them. That one with a fishing spider. The, the Florida fishing spider actually laid three viable egg sacs and then passed, which is quite common for them. Yeah. Um, so they'll have multiple sacs and then the female is finished. She's done for. Um, so, yeah, so she passed. I kept her for possibly maybe about seven months, I think it was, something like that. Um, hey, and, in that and in that time, we had uh, you know three, three big viable sacs from her. Uh, so that was a wild-caught female that just kept on producing. Oh, piranhas. We used to keep piranhas. Yeah, we used to do a lot with them, and they're nowhere near as brave as you think they are. They're, nope. they're quite cowardly things, really. Yeah. They, they, don't, very, very... they don't attack like the films make make believe they attack. Well, what you got to remember is when, when you see these stuffs, when they, they, they throw like a, you know, a bloody horse's leg or something into the, into the river – and the whole place erupts, you're looking at probably just a thousand, 2,000 shoal of fish, and they're hungry. They are hungry. So you, it's mass in numbers, and that's why you get that reaction. When you – I mean, I kept – I think the most I kept was 50 or 60 at a time, and even with that, when you put food in, they would shy away, but then as soon as they start – the odd ones come in and start picking at it, then eventually you get that little system going, yeah. and they all go mad. It takes a little bit to actually G them up. Yeah, they're not they're not very brave. They're quite boring to keep, to be fair. Not exciting. <laughs> Metal theologian says I've learned all about piranhas from that 70s movie. Frugal, <laughs> <laughs> um, I love your T Celedonia video again earlier. Um, I'd love one. Maybe I could keep one. Um, and you, have you got any babies of those for sale at the moment? No. No. Any paired females or anything like that? No, no, I lost my females. Um, both both my uh, breeding females passed. Um, and that was an interesting thing, actually, because we, we've seen that the um, we've seen that there is like a life expectancy on them. And they're nowhere near as long lived as we first thought they were. And oh, Danielle uh, says Dan's got some. I, actually, yes, I do believe she's got two left. Because she had she had a bunch of them and they sold out real quick. So if uh, if you're serious about getting one, you need to go on the website now, Portsmouth Tarantulas, and um, and buy it now because I'm sure now that everyone knows that, that she's it's got two left, they ain't going to last. So um, arachnoid addiction. 
they they literally flew out the door. So if you're serious about one, get on that website now. Otherwise, you'll miss it. I guarantee you they won't be there in 10 minutes' time. Hey, Amy. Um, what was the other question? Where are we? Oh, everybody's saying hello to camera lady. <laughs> um, ads from Yorkshire T says, Dave, um, what you got on sack in the serial tub trials? Um, evening ads, <laughs> always good to speak to you. Uh, I am, baby. We, uh, we, we converse a little bit on, um, on Facebook from time to time. Uh, very knowledgeable guys, our ads. He, uh, and he's had a lot of success. He's done some really cool stuff. Uh, now, on eggs that we've got, we've got um, on egg sacks, we've only got a minia and um, we had a hatty hatty. What else did we have? Uh, we had something else. I can't remember what it was. So, I can't think what it was. Um, but then yeah, we've only literally started pairing up probably maybe about the last three months. So we've done no breeding at all last year um and we're only just starting to get stuff paired up now so many of our stuff are over in them cereal boxes now and things are looking really good it's looking hopeful we've got at the moment we've got metallica paired um subfusca lowland uh what else we got rufus panama blondes um we've got uh, fasciata paired uh avix versi colors so we've got quite a few that are, are going, and then we've still got loads that we need to do as well. Just just before we move to Eric Eric Johnson's com Johansson, sorry, his comment with the versicolas, right? This is just this is this blew my mind what what the male was doing, and I, I think um, I'm hoping that you might have seen this before. Put the male in with the female, they did their thing. Bigger exoterra that, that she's in, and they kept doing their thing. And I, and I thought, bloody hell, it's one o'clock in the morning. I thought, you know what, I'll leave you together overnight. Went back the following day, there he is. And I went to catch up him. He ran down into where the Hatron team fangirl mode activated. Hey, Dave, hey, Scott, hey, Chris, hey, Tron. <laughs> I love that one. Um, <laughs> so, the, so the male. Ran into the females, um, and well, hide, and the female protected him. She threat posed me. Oh wow! And now then, was she he, was she threat posing you, or was she reacting to him flying in there? They live there together. They live in her hide together. Oh nice! And I take I take the top off, and she will climb over him, and then she's there. And if I get a paintbrush or anything like that, she threat poses, and that's a thirsty cola. Wow, I was like, "Are That's you actually do are you doing this right now to me?" Or what? I'm thinking it's Luke's mail. You've got to let him come back out again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got somewhere to be. <laughs> yeah, he's got to go and do his thing somewhere else. <laughs> I've got his, um, I've got his Gerensis M2 here as well. He's getting that back. We're supposed that. to get it back. Yeah, well, it, I've, I've been messaging Luke for about a week. Um, so he's getting that back on Monday or Monday, Tuesday now, I think he said. Yeah. Because um I said I could pop it over down the weekend, but he's he's gone to the races today, so ah. Yeah, no, I could uh, I could do with that. My female's ready, she's all marked out and ready to go. So yeah, it'd be another hey, one. Tim. Hey Ellen. Tim Baxter. Tim, can we can we drop hey. your email? Good evening, Tim. Let me know in the comments, Tim. Um yeah, Tim's got some awesome news for the Scorpion yeah. world. Yeah. Um, if you don't, if you don't follow Tim, Tim Baxter Scorpions on Facebook, go check it out. I think the news is on his page anyway. To be honest, yeah, he messaged me earlier on and uh, and me. Like, yeah. this morning. I was like, get in. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool stuff. Cool stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Go for it. He says, yeah. So Tim Baxter has now got his DWA license, which it's like you know, Tim's like Dave. He's like Chris and, and and a few of the others. He's one of us. Um, so I think it's bloody brilliant. It, it, he's not like a bigger company or anything like that, or a zoo or anything. It's just a bloke with his scorpions and his shed, isn't it? And now he's now now he's got his DWA, which is just absolutely amazing. Hey Anton. Hey Anton. Uh, get in. Um, 
Eric says, with Celadonia brought up, I kind of wonder which is the tarantula with the shortest lifespan. Hey, tarantula rookie. Um, if it's a true tarantula, pro probably the Celadonias are there, really. I mean, we were looking into uh, thinking, looking around about three and a half years for them. Hello, I it's like, 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 with, with them being smaller because. Do you know what I mean? Because the, the true spiders tend to be a bit skinnier than what the tarantulas do, and they don't live as long, do they? No. No, true spiders, generally speaking, uh, a, a lot of them are very seasonal, actually. And then uh, and then others, you know, you'll, you'll get a couple of seasons out of them. But, um, yeah, in terms – I mean, tarantula-wise, most things will go go a reasonable thing. It is, this is actually something that I want to do a video of um, soon. Um I'm probably going to get shot down in pieces for it, but I think there's um, there's an awful lot of misinformation about um, the lifespans of many of these spiders. And, oh, uh, Tom. Tom. And, you know, and I mean, I think the um, a lot of the stuff that that I've done over the years, and I've I've seen how you know with optimum care, how how long these things are living for, and um, and it's nothing like what we're we're being force fed. So. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking. Um, I'm just trying to work out how I'm going to put it all together. But um, but yeah, I want to do. I want to do a video on on ages. To be, to be honest, that type of video can only be done by yourself because I think you're one of the few people in the UK to be keeping spiders for forty plus years. I don't know. There's there's probably there's plenty so, of people out there, but it's um, it's it's you know it's it is one of them one of them things. It's something that's bothered me for a long long time, you know, and. Unfortunately, one of one of the things we find ourselves with in the hobby is sometimes it's easier to just go along with whatever the status quo is than it is to go out on a limb and actually say something. And um, yeah, yeah you know, because there is always, always going to be a huge amount of people that are like, "No, the book says this. You're wrong." You know, and they but they've got nothing to back up what they're saying. So, and that's where it always ends up getting a bit sticky. You know, I mean, I'm open to debate with with anything, with anybody, as long as you've got, you know, some decent sort of like stuff to throw back at me, you know, but you need facts. Um, and, you know, we we tend to literally just regurgitate the same old crap. And uh, I think it's about time we sort of like addressed, especially things like the ages of spiders and, you know, their lifespans in captivity. I think, I think things like the rosea, and their actual lifespan are gonna are gonna open eyes because yeah, I, know, I, think, yeah. I know Luke's what he's coming up to thirty years of age, and he yeah. bought his his um, rosea as an adult female. I think he was. I think if I remember right, he was either seven or eight years of age. Yeah, so that's been an adult female for twenty years. Yeah, well, see, this is the thing because, yeah. and this is where this is where many of the um, the lifespans that have been put on spiders have originated from. They've come from the brachypelmas, the anapelmas, all that sort of side of it, the spiders, which are long-lived, you know? But the problem is, is them same lifespans are being put onto Asian arboreals, fossorial spiders, and all these other spiders. Many of these spiders haven't been kept in the hobby for more than five minutes. How the hell we know it lives for 20 years? I don't know. You know? It's just, it's just absolute rubbish. And it, it's sort of like, I don't know, uh, every now and again, I'll get a little thing gets in me and it bugs me. So <laughs> so I, I think it's time for a video. <laughs> and we'll see what no, kind of discussion we get from it, you know. I think it's good because instead of people just going, oh, yeah, this, this spider lives for 10 years because Google told me, or this this YouTube video and that YouTube video, they both say 10 years. And, yeah. you know, the actual spider's living for 20 or something. Um I think I think a video like that, Dave, is going to shake up the hobby and open eyes. And I think it's I think it's also needed. Yeah, I mean, I think, I'll be I will be watching that video intensely. <laughs> I think it's definitely um, it's just, it's a subject that needs to be broached, you know. And it's also as well because the problem is is like many beginners will actually judge their successes and failures on this sort of information. You know, and if, yeah, honest, if someone's sitting there telling you that this spider lives for 15 years plus, 
and yours only lived for two or three years, straight away you're like, what have I done wrong? You know? Well, look at the Saladonia. Yeah. I mean, I mean how, the, how long how long did your adult females live for? Three and a half. Amy, I marked your comment. Cheers, Chris. Yeah, three three and a half um, three and a half years, and, and I spoke to a few different people in um, in Europe that are breeding them, and they're coming back with exactly the same kind of stuff, and with a, with very very similar sort of outcomes as to what I had. Um, so, I mean, my both my females they both molted out, and they were both in a one condition, and within a month six weeks of molting they died, um, and you know, and it's. When they first came into the hobby, we were led to believe that 10, 12 years, you know, was a viable lifespan for them. That's nowhere near. Nowhere near. And there's enough people now that have bred them from sling through to breeding and then losing them that we're now getting that information that we can see that there is actually a, a lifespan and there is a, um, a, a you know, what do you call it? A, um, there's a link there, you know, they're, they're, it's actually showing true now. So, you know, the information's there. Yeah, a little bit differently. Uh, just for just so anybody watching, if you if you ask a question, um, Chris is making a note. So he'll be putting them up on screen. So um, just, yeah, don't, don't, don't worry too much. If we do end up missing it, just put it straight back into the comments. That'd be pretty awesome. Tarantula Rookie, uh, yeah, yeah. literally one of my favorite men ever to walk <laughs> the planet is matt it says he's dave oh, I he, he's just yeah he, he's he's helped me out over the last couple of months on messenger like on whatsapp with mental health crazy like um so matt says dave did you manage to make use of the two male pumpkins from seas one of them one of them got munched um he didn't last very long at all uh she literally came out they had a quick little dance a run around and she literally ran him down um and i mean literally out of the tub and ran him down um so that was him uh and then we ended up we left her and then i had another one which um i tried because she i thought i ain't gonna try the second one with it with her you know she's a bit too feisty so we tried the next one and I'm not sure whether we got copulation, but it looked like it. Um, and then he actually came out. He went in twice. And then I was getting ready for him to go in with the other one, and then he passed. So, oh. yeah. So we're looking at probably getting the two, you know, two two sort of inseminations. So we'll see now. Um, hey, there's something I've not had a lot of luck with because I've, uh, I've paired them before in the past. And they've even molted out or, you know, something else has gone wrong and they just haven't produced. So, um, yeah, be a bit of a different one. I, I know somebody that's uh, paired pumpkins. Hey, Chris. Yes. In fact, I had some of Chris's youngsters. Hey, uh, he does well, does Chris. Yeah, yeah. Especially with the pairings and, and the egg sacs. This, and this is the thing, you see. If you if you can't produce your own, you have to buy someone else's. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, well, that's what it's about, isn't it? Yeah, but you're, oh, not just buying... work, <laughs> yeah. you're not just buying somebody <laughs> else's, shot. Dave. You're helping. You're helping other breeders yeah. by by buying by buying somebody's slings, and that's putting money back to them to be able to carry on with their hobby and keep their interest going as well. Yeah, so it's yeah. appreciate you, dude. Yeah. Well, no, um, you got to do it. You know, it's all um, it's all it's all good stuff. Yeah. Erin says, Dave, if you go in London Capital Show, will you be selling any balfs there? Have you got He's a table? Actually, there, meaning about forty males, because he kept add a, add a couple more comments. He wants about forty right. males because he wants to pair his female. I, I, yeah, I've, yeah, I say I've got, I've got a few males kicking around. So, yeah, they will be there. Uh, Night owl crystals and creatures. Please go check out our Amy over on TikTok. She's awesome. Um, says, how long do larger spiders like robustum take? to reach full size maturity right now this is this is a that is a day question because I, I i am unaware at the moment this is a technical question and one <laughs> hasn't, question. yeah the one that hasn't actually really got a solid answer no <clears throat> purely because all of our spiders are heat and food um related so if you're keeping your spider on the cool side it will eat less and take a lot longer to mature. 
if you're keeping them like I do, when my room's nice and warm, my yep. spiders, even my brachypelmas grow quick, you know. And this is another thing that's come up in conversation recently. People complaining all the time that brachies are slow growers. If you keep them in optimum conditions, they're not slow growers. How you about know? your acropelmas? Same thing. You know, if you keep them in optimum conditions, you will see a difference in their growth space and how they go around things. And same with the molting. You often hear about people saying, oh, you know, my malt, my my brachy's been in pre-molt for the past seven months. Well, chances are it's because it's kept on your windowsill and it's got bloody frostbite, you know. <laughs> it's, it's too damn cold. I'm laughing, but it's true. Yeah, it is true. Yeah, it's too cold. So, you know, there's there's a lot. There, there is no hard and fast rule as to how quick something will mature. It's literally down to heat and down to how much food it's getting. I mean, and that will dictate I mean, it. I mean, me, you and Chris could all have the same sling and one could be doing better than the other two. Well, one might have been dragging behind purely because maybe I'm feed, feeding large flies, Dave's feeding a maggot and Chris is feeling, feeding a chopped up mealworm. And maybe maybe those feeds as a sling have an effect on, on how quick they grow yeah. as well. A good um, example yeah. is I bought some P Metallica slings from Dave uh, when he had the sack. When was that? 2021? Same yeah, time, Lewis. Yeah, last couple of years yeah. I've had them. Yeah, I bought three slings from you. One of them matured as a female and she's already paired and it's close to dropping a sack. After and, three years. Uh, after two years, while I bought slightly larger slings from somewhere else about a month later, the female's still not mature. She's about yeah. multi two away. It just yeah. depends. I think also the blood, well, think the blood lines have have a have an effect then. I think there's there's a I don't know whether it's as sort of as deep as the bloodlines, but I do believe that there is um if you think if you get a sack that's got a hundred slings in it. Then yeah, I know where you're going. Not not every one of them is 101 percent perfect. You They're know? not all supposed to survive either, are they? No, but no. In, so, in, in our conditions, obviously they do. Yeah, I mean, I've kept them. I've kept them where I've held back slings that I've bred myself, and I might keep 20 or 30 back for myself. And out of that 20 or 30, maybe 80 percent will do really well. Five percent might they just die for the hell of it. You know, they might just keel over and die. Um, and then others are just like never really grow, you know, they're just like they're almost like they're stunted, they take forever. And quite often, you can still get them to maturity, but it takes them a heck of a lot longer. And in the wild state, that spider would have died a long time ago, you know. So, what we got to remember is when you've got really poor doers or ones that are very small and slow. If you're going to be looking into breeding, then maybe it'd be better to let them ones go, yeah. you know, and and you know, and just let them go. But again, we come back to that situation with like the beginners because they now fret because they've lost a spider. It may not have been any cause of you. It may have just been a fact that that was a poor spider, and that's not even a fact that it's anything to do with the breeder. You know, these spiders have big clutches for the sole fact that. Out of that big clutch of spiders, a hundred spiders, if probably five, seven percent make it, that's probably doing really well. I mean, I, mean, I have spiders, Dowie, for no reason, and it, it still upsets me now. But it, it's it's from like talking to yourself, Dave, and a few others. You realise that what you're saying there is is true and factual because you can give a spider everything it needs perfect environment and it can still pass away just purely because like you're saying in the wild that one would have actually died and probably become food for the for its brothers and sisters you know and that yeah. that's, that's <laughs> that, I, I think i mean i think that they produce let's say 100 and they already know that 20 percent of those is, is is or should have been food for the others you know because when they're out where, wherever wherever they're breeding, let's say, and, and the females must kind of get a gist of how many feeders are running around, and it's going to be pretty scarce. You know, they're not going to get fed like we feed them, are they? No, no. It's it, it's it's you know, it's a massive. We 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 literally tip the scales in our favour. 
So we can, you know, we, we get much, much higher success rates. But I think people need to understand that that, you know, that is almost a false, false thing, if you like. It's not 15,000. It's 200. Oh, uh, Danielle Hardman says, hey, this camera, hey. camera, camera ladies, just hey. looking at books, at booking us in for Zipland World, Lost 15 it. grand. Can you sell some spiders to pay? What, what's the story there, Dave? Well, apparently, it makes, it makes no sense, but yeah, apparently, uh, they all want to go to Velocity World in Wales. Oh, yes, which is a massive zip wire. And, oh, yeah, uh, it's the biggest in the yeah. world, isn't it? And looking at it, it's looking like I'm paying for it. <laughs> yeah, me and Chris are coming as well, Dave. Anybody yeah, else not? to yeah. zip world? Anyone in the chat, you're welcome to join us. Five star hotel, food, you know, food and drinks paid for. You know, oh, what, for, for a couple of weeks is that day? Is that too <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Tarantula Torbay, hey Torbay, says Dave had a nice chat with you at Taunton's show about the mature male C Versi and mature male OBT. I sent, uh, they sent you, and I bought a crown crack and sling from you. Question: Did that crank crack and sling come from your big female? Yes, it did. Yeah, all the all the crack and slings were all bred here. Yeah, there was someone asked actually earlier on about is everything that we sell bred in the room? And no, it's not. So sometimes, if there's other interesting spiders that pop up and other people get sacks, then I quite often buy stuff from there. I also um, buy up. Um, people's collections and surplus spiders. So anyone who's like coming out of a hobby or whatever, um, or just got surplus spiders they don't want anymore, I'll quite often buy those spiders. And then what happens with them is I, with especially with the collections, I keep back the stuff that is of interest to me, uh, and that then goes into my breeding programs or whatever. And then the surplus stuff that I don't necessarily want I then sell on again, and um, and that helps to finance the projects that I have coming forward. I can't so, see how you can sell spiders because I keep every single. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's oh, a crazy it's thing. Crazy it's all... I'm like, yeah, I bought that to flip, but I can't flip it. It's staying. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's. And then Tara's like, did but... you sell that spider? I'm like, uh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. Yeah, I think it's um. I mean we. You know, any, hey, anything is, that's part of the, um, the the projects that I've got in hand at the moment, then I, I hang on to them and I do them. But what I do do is normally once I've bred something a few times and I'm happy that I've sort of sussed it out, then I'll, I'll quite often I'll move on to something else. I yeah. am, Tim. I am. <laughs> yeah. you got to. You, you, can't, you can't afford to keep everything. I can't. Where did the, uh, where did the Amazonia Shimani babies come from, Dave? <laughs> And you better have kept a couple. <laughs> I've, I've got, yeah, they, no, I've got them all here actually. I um, I didn't do anything with them because quite often what I'll do is when I get them in, I I don't advertise them straight away. So I, I literally make sure I'm happy with them and they're all doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, and then then I put them up. Um, so yeah, but yeah, I will be hanging on to some of those because uh, I want some for myself. Because uh, yeah, sold sold you some, sold Portsmouth Danielle some as well, Portsmouth tarantulas. Chris has got ten, and I've held back thirty. Yeah, yeah. I have just uh, because because I bought the female as an adult, and I want to kind of see them and how they progress. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you no. know the whole the whole process of getting to adult plus plus you always want you know oh that's a male yeah that's not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I saw you got that male Solaris as well. Oh, Dave, how how much are, are Solaris? They're not cheap. Oh, Seventy-five pound plus ten pound postage of packaging. Really? Off um, Shiz Shizma Palma TV, who yeah. does the Spider Channel. Uh, he's got half a million subscribers. He lives in the UK, but he's um, a Filipino talking channel. So, if there's anybody here that can understand Filipino, go check out Shizma Palma TV. Um, I go and watch him every now and again because I find it interesting to see how people from all over the world keep spiders compared to mm. how we do yeah and he, he keeps a lot of his things traditionally how you would do over in the philippines as well so it's 
some of it's a little bit different to us plus uh, you know other people's other countries views on on what we do with animals or what we do with spiders and inverts can vary a hell of a lot and yeah. how much attachment we put onto ours compared to to certain another culture's attachment can be completely different as well and understanding of the spiders as well can be different from person to person let alone country to country and i find all that quite quite interesting kind of how humans interact with them full stop so i, I do like to pop over and and, and go and say he's, he's his name's mac he's a great guy great great guy yeah um, metal theologian how much do we know about the way spiders age even i'd imagine the process is is understood a lot better when it comes to primates like us yeah that's a good question because with us dave i mean with us you know you see that going from child to adult and then for us to go from adult to elderly is a really long process it's obvious you know wrinkles gray hair all the rest of it we you know we slow down and we don't want that we don't admit we we don't want to admit that we slow down or lose a bit of power in our muscles and stuff but we do but with spiders they do it, change they do it, change so you can i mean it's almost you, through a molt isn't it it's like overnight they go from looking all right to looking a bit shabby and yeah. then it's like yeah i mean if you look at um the metallicas actually are a really good example if you look, you look at a Metallica, if you get a really nice example Metallica, it can be really bright blue. The yellow on it is really, really rich, you know. And as they grow, so they, they literally, they start off really pale when they're, when they're sort of like, say, juvies, because slings, we, we know slings don't have a lot of colouring. But once they hit juvie stage, they start to get their colour. And then once they get up into that sort of sub-adult stage, they're looking at their very best. You know, they're bright, they're, they're really, really colourful. And then you'll see them go through for the next sort of three, four years, they'll maintain that sort of colouring and they'll look fairly good. And then as they, get, as they go on, you'll see then slowly the yellow will start deteriorating and then they'll start getting blacker. So they lose that vibrant blue and they start getting more black and dull blue until eventually, if you get one into old age, Many of the Metallicas go almost black, black, almost, you know. And um, do you, do so you when remember they've done that? They've done that full full color cycle. I, mean, I, I was chatting to Luke. Oh, I, 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 well, I might say chatting to Luke. I spoke to him a few times about the Metallicas, and he said, he said years and years and years ago. Um, again, you'll probably remember, Dave. People were selling the adult females that had gone black, yeah, as a subspecies, as 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 a Metallica species black or whatever it was um for for, for more money than a, than a metallica which they actually were yes that is right yeah in actual well, fact um i can remember um not that long ago probably only just before lockdown the uh there was someone at the show trying to sell them as black thing but and then when they were questioned they were like no 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 they're not very old and you're like yeah i think i know a little bit better yeah, than that. you I know think you're, i think you're full of sugar mate yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I, I actually remember it it's, it's like the bro peas they go black the blue goes black um metallicas yeah. oh now then look at this i don't know if you're going to be able to see this you might want to go on full screen but do you, do you want to just put that oh, nice one, Chris? We'll Chris's, new, Chris's new hairdo is giving people different ideas. Look, look, look. Uh, can we see that? <laughs> I see a little <laughs> silhouette of a man. Skullamush, skullamush, and a the bohemian <laughs> uh, tim said that was two years ago that somebody was trying to sell those um uh, oh, right. yeah you remember yeah yeah, yeah I, I remember it um it happening you know and i, I remember looking at them thinking some poor mug's gonna pay through the nose for these you know and it shows really just how um how sort of <laughs> what's, what's the word um naive we can be well, yeah, naive, and also what the sellers. Some sellers are a little bit like, a bit cutthroat, you know, and they do it cheeky, but, yeah. cheeky as as, yes, Poo bar. 
Yes. Yes. Um, as as Chris has just Chris has give, just given me the three minute warning sign. Um, so in three minutes it is nine p.m. on Dots Inverts on a live. Nine p.m. is the watershed. So if you've got any kids watching, please remove them because after nine o'clock we do swear um, and we do obviously have a little bit of adult conversation as well. Normally marked by Chris calling me every name under the sun, and he's ruthless with it at dead on nine o'clock. So if you have got any kids watching. Um, please remove them or, or or turn us off. Because like I said, there will be the odd swear word and what have you. But at nine o'clock, Chris does call me all the names under the sun so you know the watershed has come along. Anthony, the Anthony Tucker says, Hi, um, what would you say would be a good number to start a Balfouri communal? Um, I always think... I always, oh yeah, I'd say a minimum five. I always, I always say ten is probably the best number. <laughs> Ellen, oh. Ellen oh. has just put the camera lady keeps Dave in excellent condition. He looks happy and has a nice sized abdomen. Well done, camera lady. <laughs> <laughs> She's been checking out my abdomen. <laughs> 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 yeah, else says it's a thousand Balfouris is a good size communal to start with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially when you buy the Balfouris off Portsmouth Transfer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just so happens. <laughs> oh my word. No, I reckon um, uh, brilliant comment. Ten is um, a really good starter number. So we are a little bit behind with the questions. I know this one came up a little while ago, but I do appreciate everybody's patience. Um, Ellen says, "Why isn't meal mealworm beetles?" He's kicked a few hairs off, though. Says Tim. Ellen says. <laughs> Why isn't why isn't beetle? Oh my god! Why isn't mealworm beetles used as food? Only see the worms used as food. They've got hard shell. Well, yeah, they have. Yeah, yeah. Scott, you're a fucking wanker. It's nine o'clock. <laughs> <o 'clock. laughs> <Nine o 'clock. laughs> it's it's nine p.m. <laughs> I told you he takes no prisoners. Come nine o'clock. <laughs> um, the the only thing with the mealworms I've ever seen them fed to is mantis, and the mantis just make short work of them yeah a lot of small um like even slings and things like Mind that a lot of of with them. <laughs> it's also as well i think if you if you actually squeeze a uh, mealworm <laughs> beetle, they stink as well oh yeah they've got like an odor to them so yeah that's probably not probably don't help i, th I think with mealworm beetles best thing you can do is start your own mealworm colony off with them yeah yeah um i think they're sexually active for around three months and then they start yeah Start chilling. I've just started it off with this um with a uh, bug factory millworm pod. And it's it. it's got like filters inside it and yeah. so far no smell. No smell. Ah. So and uh, anyway. actually sells them in her shop. The high, I yeah. rate them. I really do rate them. Mm. One, one, they're neat. They can pack. They look pretty cool. They're great to get out with friends, family, or 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 your kids' mates come round. You know, mm. just to get them out and have a play and have a look. Um, but again, you know, it, it's it's like almost odorless. It can't smell anything with them. Mm. I was quite quite surprised. Well, well, yeah. Right. So, uh, tarantula rookie, which is Matt. Uh, please go check Tarantula Rookie's um, YouTube channel out. He has got a phenomenal channel. He says, what's your thoughts? Uh, we discussed this at Seas. Leaving pairings until females are larger, even after the spermica are opaque. Some leave females until much larger. Egg fertility may be affected. Yeah, that's an interesting one. We did have a bit of a conversation about it. The um, I'm actually leaning... Oh, it's like at the it's moment, with my... species, to be honest. Yeah, it is. If I say pumpkin patch, when they're fully mature, it's impossible to pair them because they always munch the males. 
you're yeah. better off when they're smaller, small size females, then you have more success with the sacks. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, this is something that um, that I've been playing with at the moment with the therophosis, with the stermis and what have you. Always in the past, we've always gone for them big, robust adult females, you know, the real old females. Now, bearing in mind, a lot of them, they're probably getting on a fair bit in years. What I've done recently is I've started pairing them up much, much younger. So although they're only like half the size, they're actually mature. So they're, they're very young. So it's going to be a thing now to find out, really. This is something that will probably take about five years to work it out. But it's 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 going to be an interesting mm -hmm. thing to see whether them females produce better sacks, because what we have had is with the old big females, quite often they'll destroy a sack, or they'll dump it in a water bowl, whatever. They 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 just get rid of them. So there there, there needs to be a reason why that is happening. And you get um, the smaller sacks sometimes, and the females are smaller, but yeah, it's still successful. Yeah, but I think it's um. Mm. I think there's there's definitely and some also as well some some spiders mature really small yeah so whereas like you might be expecting a spider to be say two or three inches when it's mature but then that one may well mature out at an inch in size so it all depends on species like chris was saying different species different things it's a good but, example was if some people remember rad had a video on his facebook and tiktok where in the sling pot, got you on a bruni piece, had the name yes. of the extract. Yes, I remember tiny, that. Tiny spider. You would yeah. never think spider like that would make an extract. No, and yet when you consider that a female bruni piece is, you're probably looking at inch and a half, two inches. Yeah. Bigger than your thumbnail. You know, as, a, as an adult female, two inch spider. So, yeah, to have one literally mature and produce a sack inside a sling vial, and it was a small spider inside that sling vial. Yeah. So you know, there's there's a lot there's a lot we don't know about yet. A lot. We normally look at the flaps in a malt, and when they're darken off, you kind of think, "Oh yeah, mature." Do you think we're going down the wrong lines? No. Oh, sorry. I said, you know, we we normally look at the the flap of the female in a malt, don't we? And when they darken yeah. off, is that's generally when people say, "Oh, mature, ready for breeding." Yeah. But well, also think... another thing is, if the female, some females, when you try to pair them smaller, they don't even, they're not even interested into pairing, even if they're conditioned. Yeah. There's also yeah. It's, it, it's it really depends on the species. There's no real answer to that question, to, in my opinion. I think it's also as well when you're looking at the viability of females, is that there's there's a huge amount of time between the molts. So there's a there's a big time change between the females being receptive. And and I think this is something that, you know, I've been mucking around with a lot over the last few years where just trying um, at different times in the malt stage as to when they're being done. Because generally speaking, most of the time people, we've always sort of said eight to 12 weeks after malting, it's worth giving them a go, worth trying them out. In some respects, it's like, is it worth waiting for them? Because the females will produce the eggs anyway. They, they will produce the eggs. What we want to do is know when they produce the eggs. Then we want to introduce a male so that we've got decent eggs with viable sperm from the male. And then we should, in theory, get a quick egg sack. But if we, if we pair them at, say, 8 to 12 weeks from um, molting, the chances are she's not produced eggs yet. She's not totally ready. So we can then um, pair them, and then we get what we call like a delayed implantation, which we can see in mammals and stuff like that. Things like bears and stuff like that do it. So they'll mate in the springtime. Then they'll go all the way oh, through hibernation. And then as, as they're coming out of hibernation, that kickstarts everything into action. And now – the sperm, which has been held back, will then fertilize the egg, and then she will give birth in the spring. So it, so you, you, you know, it's carrying on, but it's called delayed implantation, and um, and I think there's a lot to be said for that in spiders, which, but I don't think people have really looked into it like that. So I think that, there's that, with with your zookeeping background, though, Dave, we, you know, we, we needed somebody like yourself to have a look 
and applies different thought processes to the spiders, which yeah. is exactly exactly what you do. And I remember, was it a couple of lives ago we had together? We were talking about the spiders actually carrying the eggs, and then the males going and fertilizing the female that yeah. had eggs already. And up until that point, myself included, I think most of us just thought, well, the male, you know, has a go on the female. The female goes, oh, spurt, better produce some eggs. Whereas, yeah. really, you know, it, they can produce the eggs because it's the time of the season. It, they've been conditioned. They're ready for it. As opposed to waiting for the sperm first. I found that very, very fascinating when we had that when we had that chat the, the, See, on that other live. I tell you, it was... This is another reason why it's, it's important to um, only feed your, your female sporadically. So, you know, I don't, as you well know, I don't agree with a, a regular feed pattern. No, so I don't. I look at my spiders and that dictates whether it gets fed or not. And sometimes yeah. they might go three, four, five, six weeks without being fed. And then I'll feed them. So sometimes when you can, when you see spiders that are being fed like that, sometimes you will see them swell up anyway. This is the production of eggs. They're already swelling up with eggs. So it's not food. If you're heavily feeding your spider to a point where it's always in a fat condition, you, you won't necessarily see that egg production. It's not there. You know, it's, it's, it's hidden underneath that um, excess, if you like. So if you feed them differently, you can then quite often you can see when they're actually producing. And if quite often as well, if you get them out and you put a torch under them, you'll see them glow yellow in their abdomen. And this is where they're full of eggs. Now that is the that time. Was gonna, that you was going to be me? my my next question to you was going to be how do you tell the difference between a spider that's carrying eggs and a and a simple spider that's like myself a little bit more chunky, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, is it this? This is the thing, isn't it? I mean, you can you can literally if if you get them out and put them in something you know like a cricket box or something, something that's you know clear, and then shine a, a strong torch underneath their abdomen you will see their whole abdomen will light up and um, almost like a light bulb and it will light up and then you'll be able to see the difference in the coloring and everything else. It's very much like um, candling eggs and stuff like that when we were breeding birds. So it's the same sort of thing. So you're, you're looking for that, that difference in it. And the best way to do it is if when you get your spider is just candle it at any time. I say candle it because that's, that's what we call it in um, when we're doing birds. It's, can it's called candling. You can do this the same with your spiders. You can candle your spiders. So you can get used to seeing them when they're empty. And then when you see them full, you'll be like, oh, wow, now I see the difference. I've got it. You know, but you need to be doing it, you know, probably like once a month or so with a mature female until eventually you see that difference. And you might you might do it like, you know, over a period of four or five months and not see any difference at all. And you'll be well, questioning yourself as to whether you know what you're doing. But then when you do see it, it will be like, ah, there's that eureka moment. You're like, now I see the difference. It's massive. You know, it's massive. And if anybody's in the comments wondering how you can get your spider, especially in old world, into a safe position to shine a light through it, these yeah. two are flipping. Absolutely. That is absolutely perfect for the job. Perfect. And these are from the uh, tarantula room, Christoph. These, mate, I've got I've got three of these now. Uh, the round one, the larger round one, just goes straight over the top of your round cork bark, and then you can just put a paintbrush through the bottom. The, the, the spider comes out into it. And it oh, I think these are flipping brilliant. He did I say to me when when I bought the first one, he said these are a game changer. You'll never you you will never not use them. And I was like, nah. and then. I kept it for ages. I started using it about two months ago, and that's it. I've got some more now. And well, I done, I done a video. Um, I think it was a week or two ago. Uh, of I rehoused the phallax, and um, it it literally bolted out of the enclosure and landed on the floor. And um, it was only the week. I think it was a week or two after the Taunton show. And when we went to the Taunton show, Chris came up, his table was next to mine and uh, he came up to me and he just gave me a handful of them. And he goes, 
tried them out. And I said to him at the time, I said, I'm not doing a video, you know? And he was like, no, I don't want you to do a video. So I just want some honest feedback. Tell me what you think. And uh, because I don't like doing reviews, you know, I don't don't like doing reviews purely because if I don't like it, I'm going to have to tell you and I don't want to upset anybody. So it's sort of, I try and I stay away from that sort of thing. And uh, anyway, this, this spider's on the floor underneath my foot. And uh, I got these tubes here and I, and I literally just pulled it out and I said, you know what? I got given these tubes and we went all through it. I said, well, let's give them a go. And it works an absolute treat. You um, lying git. That was oh, all staged. It's what? <laughs> it was all staged. Oh, yeah. I said you to the spider, <laughs> I said to the spider, I said, about 15 minutes in, run up the side and drop down on the floor. I you actually know? watched and, that video a couple of days ago. I was like, fucking hell. On, on cue, that spider, it gave me the nod. It goes, right, I'm getting ready to go. And that was it. It was out. Yeah. <laughs> I like doing the reviews, but if anybody ever says, Oh, Scott, can you do this? Can you do a video? I'm like, Yeah, but if it's shit, I am going to fucking tell everybody. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's surprising how many people over the course of five years have kind of gone, uh, uh, Well, well, um, well, what we'll do is we'll message you in about four weeks because <laughs> what they want to do is give you something for free. And because you've had it for free, go, Oh, this is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah, you can't do that. No. It's like if somebody gives it you for free for a video, it's like, mate, if it's shit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, yeah. end of story. You know, I think it's wrong for because you, you, you see it on not exactly spider channels, but like you know, somebody selling drinks or something like that, and the and they review yeah. it and tell you it's so nice, and you go buy it and it tastes like crap. Yeah, nah, nah. No, I'm the same. I, 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 I stay away yeah. from that sort of stuff. I, I value my friendship more than I yeah. do. You know, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I don't need. I don't need three catch tubes. You know, what I mean, I don't need them. I'd, I'd much yeah. rather maintain a friendship. And uh, you know, I get on really, really well with Chris. You know, we always have hey, a, laugh, a chat at the shows and stuff. And um, yeah, he, he's a, he's a lovely guy. But um, in fairness, in fairness to him, uh-huh. them catch tubes are absolutely perfect. They're sound. Yeah, I rate them. They they are really nice. Scott, congratulations on 10K, I'm guessing. Yeah. Oh, nice one. Look at that. What's that? Ad- oh, my God. I- I'm so sorry for pronouncing your name wrong. Adreos, thank you so, so much. Appreciate that one. Um, Night Owl, Crystals and Creatures. I recently got a few mature males. I'm wondering whether it's worth the risk of pairing a male with a missing paddy pulp. Well, ask yourself the question. What's he gonna do if you don't? Exactly, I would. I would say exactly the same thing. You get, he's gonna die, isn't he? You know. So just, 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 just risk it. it then. Do it. You know. At Thank least, you, Christopher. Appreciate that. At least he would have. Um, he would have had a chance. Exactly. Uh, John says hi. Ga- hi, guys. Hi, Dave. What spider has lived for the longest period of time in your care? Thank you, Metal Theologian. Appreciate that, man. Uh, hey, yes, sir. Oh, blimey. I don't know, because it's actually probably... We're probably looking at around about nine years. Something like that. Be somewhere around there. I think um, mainly because, like, most of what I keep isn't um, the classic long-lived stuff. I, you know, I have got a few brackets and everything, but I'm getting out of them again now. <coughs> hey, Tara. Of, I've sort of lost interest in them. The um, So, yeah, I'm probably about nine years. Now the next question is from Jeremy. The Macrotherley Project. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now this is, um, this is, this is a project that's um, – had a few ups and downs. Uh, we've lost a few, gained a few. Um, we're now just growing them on. So we, we're now actually getting to the point now where we've got um, good sized juvies now. I mean, they're big, big, big juvies now. Uh, and then, as we were talking about the sizes of different spiders reaching matur- maturity, these aren't far off of it now. Um, so now we need to be looking at coinciding the ones that we know are males uh, and getting them through. And hopefully, 
in the space of like probably the next year, then we should have some, hopefully some some attempts and hopefully a success. This is yeah. one of the huge, huge reasons I, I rate you so flipping highly, Dave, is just the no bullshit. There's no bullshit there. There is literally, we've had up and downs. It's not somebody saying, I'll just show you all the good bits and that's it. Oh, no. Yeah, that, that honesty <laughs> is... Yeah, it, it, I think it stands you out for me anyway. From a, from a lot of a lot of people, you don't you don't learn anything by hiding the the poor bits. And you know, it's. I think I said to you once before when when I was younger in the zoo world, it was a constant battle. You know, you you literally, I was like a spider. You know, I, just, I just wanted to learn, and. All of my superiors, the the senior keepers above me, and the and the really senior ones, the ones in charge as such, they most of them, probably 99 percent of them, would not share their knowledge with me. You know, and all I used to get told was, if you know as much as I do, you'll have my job. So they yeah. deliberately keep you down. You know, and and I, that used to really, really piss me off because it meant now I couldn't actually go off and do a lot of stuff because I would need their permission to do it. And if they thought I was onto something, I wouldn't get the permission. So uh, it, for the first half of my career in the zoo world, it was an absolute constant battle. It wasn't until like the second half of my zoo world where I ended up with um, a boss and also um, senior keepers that were a little bit more like, do you know what? We can all learn something here. And they were willing to share what they knew and, and we could all get together and do stuff. And, and it changed a little bit then. So that's why now, you know, I make like pairing videos and do different bits and pieces to, to hopefully give other people a chance to actually have a go themselves. And I think um, over the last two or three years, I think there's, there's an awful lot more people breeding now than what yeah. there, there ever was. You know, and but, but, and that's because now there's 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 also a lot more people that are filming their spiders and putting it up, and you know they're doing all these different things. You know, there's so much going on. <laughs> Jay, next question. I think I think when it comes to the pairing videos, the, you know, I don't know if you might be the same, but they don't get the views as as what the other videos do. But to track your own career. And to look back and go, wow, I paired those like, you know, a year ago or in Dave's case, a couple of years ago. I think filming yeah. the spiders doing stuff like that is brilliant and getting it out there. So all the people, you know, they might have a juvenile and they might be thinking, oh, I'd like to pair this. I wonder how it goes. And then yeah. you've got those videos there to go and watch, haven't you? I, I, um, I get loads of people messaging me, you know, and they're, they're just sort of like, oh, I've got these spiders. Should I pair them? And, you know, we'll, we'll sit and go through it, and you know, it's 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 amazing. Now, I get people messaging me going, "Oh, I don't know if you remember me, but six months ago, you told me about doing this with a spider, and I've got an egg sac, or I've got babies." You know, and I just sit there, and I'm I'm just sort of like, "Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, that's, that's absolutely amazing." I mean, we've got it now from from people in their seventies that are doing it, yeah, and messaging me back saying now they've got baby yeah. spiders, even down to kids of like eight and nine oh. years old you know i paired my aminia i've got babies and you're like oh, yeah absolutely awesome fantastic stuff you know? yeah they're the they're the teary eye moments aren't they oh yeah honestly, when, when when a kid comes over and says i've been watching all your channels and i've got yeah. this spider because i saw it in one of your videos and i really love it and they literally they go on more of a rant than what we do it's yeah. like yeah. wow yeah no, I think, wow. I, I, mean, I think it's cracking. Uh, do you know what, what? What we mustn't forget is for all these young kids that are out there doing it, you know, we ought to thank their parents because their parents yeah. are supporting them through it and they're giving them the chances to actually do this stuff, you know. As like when I was a kid, you know, my, my parents, you know, if I brought something home, it was just like, oh, bloody hell, what's he got now, you know. They never really worried. They let me do my own thing and, you know, we used to have stuff done all the time. But it was, um, it, it's you know, I think it's, it's a really cool thing, you know, if, if the kids can sort of get involved and, and their parents help them along. I mean, I've even had 
even had um, parents message me uh, and they'd be like, oh, my son or my daughter is so-and-so and they've just had this one breed, this spider. And I, I'm actually arachnophobic, but they've watched your channel and, you know, they wanted a spider, so we got a spider. And, you know, and you're like, these are parents that are bloody terrified. And yet they're absolutely eight, terrified as well. Nine year old, yeah. You know, son or daughter is actually sitting there in their bedroom watching a video, pairing their bloody spider. And I'm I'm just sort of like, that's, that's amazing. Amazing. I mean, when I was a kid, we could watch it. What we could watch all the nature documentaries in the world, you know, and and, and you know, I thank my stepdad. I mean, he was an absolute knob to me half the time, but when it comes to nature. He's the one that turned David Attenborough on the telly and I sat there with him and watched it. He's the one that got me questioning everything about the natural world and space and all sorts. Yeah. But if I brought something home, my God, I brought ants home in a, in a, in a matchbox, hit those, dad found them, got the belt, um, brought a toad home, mum ran onto the table, I got the belt. Uh, <laughs> I bought a new home once and I didn't get, I didn't get a wallet, I didn't get nothing. My, my stepdad went, where did you find that? And I said, oh, down the froggy near the brook. And then he took me back there to put it back. Mm -hmm. And he explained to me that they were actually endangered and we need to care for them and all the rest of it. And that's where my love for the actual environment we find these creatures um, came from. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, when I was a kid, it, oh my God, we had, we had a dog. Um, I won a fish at one of the f fun fairs once. And that was about it. But if yeah. I brought stuff home, my God, yeah, my ass knew about it with a belt of the slipper. I tell you, <laughs> <laughs> I was I was lucky because my, um, my my dad my dad was um, was well into um, like the exotic side of stuff, and um, so he used to like uh, run a zoo down in Kent on the on the seafront, and um, I think my mum's got pictures of me with Hi, king, king kajus on me and crocodiles and all sorts of shit, you know, so. Yeah, it was, you know, from a very, very early age, you know. We were talking like probably three years old and stuff. But you've got to get those pictures out for the next live. Oh, yeah, I don't know what she's oh, done. Oh, my think, word. Uh, yeah, they'll be kicking about somewhere, I'm sure. But um, they, they would be absolute gold. Yeah, yeah, I think it's um, it's a different time because you've got to remember as well, back, back when I was a kid, you could pick up your exchange of Mart and buy a lion cub. So, you know, no problem. As long as I had the fifty quid to pay for it, I could buy it. And you could you could buy a mountain lion for fifty quid. You know, but you're talking back then, fifty quid was probably the equivalent of five grand today or something. You know, it's like it's, you know. So you got to put things in perspective. But you could literally buy anything, anything. And it wasn't until they brought in the Dangerous Wild Animals Act in the 70s um that it all changed but before that you could literally pick up exchanger mark because that's where we used to buy all our snakes was through exchanger mark wow and, we, and we'd, we'd literally go through there look on see what was up for sale um just in a regular newspaper and then um yeah and then we'd order them and then they'd all come through on the train I think, I think, never, never had couriers and all that sort of stuff back then have you still got any copies of those magazines if you Google exchange in Mar, they'll come up. Oh, I'm going to have a look. I'm going to have a look. I'm sure, look. You'll, I'm sure you'll, be able to, you'll be able to find them. Um, what, what was what was a – oh, Steve Irwin was my childhood hero. Now he's Dave, says Stevie. Yeah, Stevie, <laughs> go on. Go on. Um, Night Owl Crystals and Creatures. Because, oh, so, Lividus, is there a difference between spider variation when regarding the blue or the green femur? Or is it more like the OBT colour forms? This one has been debated and debated and debated to whether the there is a two locales or whether it's just the same one or what or what's going on with them. What, what's your thoughts, Dave? I'm probably going to get shot here now. The uh, <laughs> um, uh, I think do you, do you know what? I think uh, an awful lot of them is a marketing thing. And and it's like, you know, we we pull we we name one thing one and we say we charge forty quid for it. Then another one comes out that's you know slightly redder than the last one or a bit bluer than the last one. So we give it a new name and we charge seventy quid for it. 
you know, it's it's really, really difficult. I think there's an awful lot of playing around, and I don't think it's actually helpful in the hobby. I think sometimes you, you're looking at the same spider, but from different localities. So you get a slight variation. We used to see it a lot in snakes. But as to whether them being an absolutely new thing, I don't necessarily think that's always true. But it is a it's a very debatable subject. We do like difficult questions. <laughs> but it's it is one of them it's it's one of them things that will be debated forevermore. And unfortunately, we don't get um the relative information from um the right places so what we need is information from the um from the importers of course most of the people that are bringing them in don't want to share their imports they don't share the information well cosman just said he has both the green and balloon he honestly can't see the big difference no i think it's it is literally more of a color variant and um you know we're not we're not getting any more than that so i don't think it's necessarily a different spider as to whether we should be breeding the two together is a different thing because we still don't know enough that they you know that they are totally different in the first place or are they the same spider you know this is this is the problem this is this is the 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 the, the difficult part of the, the question really Oh, Scott's jammed. Look. He has, yeah. Yeah. He's been fixed like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Greg, for noticing. <laughs> I don't know what he and Bones are. I, I just I got I got I got a text. I just I have to reply to a text. It's something personal, like. And um, yeah, it froze me up for a couple of minutes. <laughs> Ian Bones says, "Hi, are you all going to be at the new show down here in Bournemouth all early in June?" Yes. Yeah, we are <laughs> the the Bournemouth book show. Yes. Yeah, we're we're booked in for it. Hey, uh, purple. It's, it's all sold out now. Uh, all tables have been sold and uh, done. Um, and as you rightly say, it is actually going to be a brand new show. This is a completely new venture. Um, so do try and, uh, you know, get down there, do it on the day. Now, it is the same day as the Wigan show, uh, which is up north. And uh, we're hoping that it's literally, you know, the Northern show is far enough away that it ain't really going to affect us. Um, it should still be a really good day down here. And it's only going to be as good as you guys make it. So well, the Northerners can go to the Wigan and the and the Southerners can go to the Bournemouth. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit unfortunate that the, um, the, the Northern show was done on the same day. Uh, that's a little bit, you know, a bit unfortunate, but... It shouldn't really make any difference. I think um, everyone that's this this side of the country will hopefully give it a go, and um, and see and see what it's all about. But it's it's one of them that it can only get better each year that it happens. So you know, don't go with massive expectations. You know, it's 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 an embryonic sort of thing at the moment. Um, I'm sure it will be a good day. I think um, I'm going to be there with with tables. Um, Portsmouth Tarantulas are also going to be there. There's another, there's a number of um, others that are already booked in. I think there is a full list out there somewhere on the internet. Um, but if not, give um, Andy Green a shout on on Facebook, and he's the guy that's actually set it all up and uh, is organising it all. Uh, he's done a sterling job so far, a really, really good job, and he's pretty much done it single handedly. So it's uh, it's it's a lot of work, you know, it's, it's hard work. But yeah, it should be it should be a really good day. The the pumpkin patch inverts. I've got a beautiful Gramastolia pulchra from Dave at the Taunton show, confirmed female. Yes. Would love to know if she was bred by yourself, Dave. Um, like picking a needle from a haystack, though. I've I've called her Lilith. <laughs> 
Unfortunately, no, I didn't read them. Um, they are um, definitely one of them that I would like to breed. They really are. They are cool. This is a really good question. Tarantula J. Evening all again. Hi, Dave. Hi, Scott. Hi, Chris. Dave, to a lot of people, you are the godfather of Tarantula Tube. I love that. <laughs> Dave's going to go from Uncle Dave to the godfather now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a lot of people look up to you, but is there anyone you look up to? Cheers for the live. Oh dear! Um, funny oh, yeah. enough, the, the, the <laughs> people, <laughs> yeah. Apart from Chris, um, no, the uh, the the people that I look up to, none of you would actually know. So um, they've been sort of people that I've worked with in the past that have been really, really good in their field. Um, I've got a very good friend um, who who worked for years with uh, a guy by the name of Trevor Moxie. Uh, back in the zoo days, and he he always fascinated me in terms, of, especially with reptiles. And he was he was at the forefront of tortoise breeding. I mean, he was breeding tortoises like they were going out of fashion, and there was no one else doing it. And I remember back in the day, then he had like a waiting list of three, four years for tortoises. So you have to get your name down early. Um, but the stuff that he done with reptiles just blew me away you know i was like you know, i was a young lad learning hey, Jason. Else. and um yeah so people like him uh my old boss rob robbie hutton no, uh, you know very very skilled in their own rights with different things and um yeah it's they're the they're the people that i i tend to look up to people that have taught me things i know a lot of people look up to like celebrities like david attenborough um, all these different people. I've been lucky in my zoo world that I've worked with some of these different people from the telly and uh, and done different programs with them and stuff. And it's not Attenborough or no, no, I've never, I've never met David Attenborough, um, but I've met quite a lot of the others. And unfortunately, you'll find with with a lot of TV presenters, most of their information is is given to them. So it's like they're, they're reading a script. Um, you, can, so, you can see it, though, when they're like that, can't you? Yeah. But when you when you actually you get them on a, like a one-to-one -one and you're talking to them, you actually sort of realise that they're not quite as au fait as they are. They still know an awful lot because you can't do that kind of job without withstand, you know, withholding a certain amount of that information. <laughs> um, I think someone like David Attenborough, the thing that I'm probably most – jealous of with someone like that is just their life experiences i mean they've traveled the world you know and well, they've he, seen stuff i could only ever dream of he went from as as they all did because you got to remember his age you know he's, he's like what 30 40 years on dave so when he was first doing the tvs it was all about hunting the fish and spearfishing and going after that rarer species and then I think he realised that these fish, due to the hunting, would, would would disappear in. So then he brought it to the BBC to show like the de not... devastation that was going on, and then obviously educate what four or five different generations into into animals and animals. Well, what you, you know, got to remember, environment, is, you know, what you got to remember is David Attenborough. Really? He start he started his career actually um, trapping. And well, not so much trapping, but importing wild animals for ZSL. So yes. he, he literally he started his career. He he'd go to these different countries and they'd buy up wild animals that have all been caught from the wild and all been brought in. And uh he was at the forefront of that. And um he he done an awful lot of that. And then at some point through his career, the, the BBC ended up make starting to make animal documentaries which they needed a face for and of course the bbc and zsl they're all quite tightly you know closely linked back then and um so he was like a natural choice he was he was just sort of like well here's our guy he goes off and travels the world and uh you know and it, and it, the thing was he could talk in front of a t in front of a camera so yeah, yeah he got the job and a lot of people they don't realize 
you, when you get all these people sit there going, oh, you know, you should frown upon this because it's been taken from the wild. You should frown upon that. You should listen to Sir David Attenborough. Well, did you know he probably brought more in the early days than anyone? You know, so yeah. it's, um, you know, again, it's back down to information. It's, it's getting the right information. Eric says, I do wonder if Dave has ever worked with Andrew Smith, the guy behind several transfer documentaries. Um, Andrew Smith's at a lot of the shows. We, I think a lot of us in the UK that go to the shows have met him. But, but, could you could you imagine uh, Andrew Smith, Dave's Little Beasties, documentary out there in the wild, <laughs> mate? I think I think I think I think every 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 person in the comments would be like, what? <laughs> oh, could you I think he's, um, again. You see, we're looking at different facets again, because you got someone like Andrew Smith, who's um, he's what's the word? He, he's very academic. He he yeah. is a, he is a true academic and he's you know he's a scientist in his own right and yes. uh, and he he's looking from a completely different angle you know so we're we're worlds apart really in what what we do and what you know what makes us tick um so yeah it's uh what he's, yeah, he, he's a very very knowledgeable guy very knowledgeable i think i think one of the main differences he's publicly funded as well isn't he he is, yeah. yeah. His, his trips are, are like almost like a crowdfunding. I think his yeah. his biggest financial supporter is is Chris's boss, which is Rad from CFTM. All oh, right. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Whereas with yourself, it's your own money going into every every single project that you do. Your own money going into your YouTube. Your own money mm. in producing your stand and everything else, and everything else that goes along with those little beasties, you know. Um, it's all self-supported it has to um but then you know to for a lot of things that, that that's how i like it you know i prefer it like that um because then it's i don't have anyone else to please bar bar you know me and camera like <laughs> that is it <laughs> i don't have to worry about anybody else i i heard camera lady is easily pleased most of the time <laughs> <laughs> apart from when she's not um, if, 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 yeah if, if if you're watching and you go to one of the shows where dave's at i highly suggest not only speaking to dave but spending a couple of minutes with camera lady she is an absolute gem an absolute credit to dave's little beasties at the shows as well i think oh do you know what I think, awesome I mean, we, awesome woman we we run them tables just like the two of us now um and yeah it's it's a full-on busy day and uh She's not very good with crowds, believe it or not. She's not. She's not really comfortable in crowd situations. So, um, yeah, she was be proud. It's, hey, a, yeah. it's it's a big day for her. It's, it is a really big day for her. And um, yeah, I'm very appreciative of the fact that you know she comes along and supports me and helps me. And I mean, she helps me in in ways you you know you wouldn't believe. It's we, just we don't want to know, Dave. Dave, just just stop right there. We don't want to know. <laughs> No, she's. Um, <laughs> we, I mean, we, 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 we've been together for a long, long time, like, like 23 years now. And, um, you know, she, she's seen it all. You know, we, we've done it all. So, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't have half, half the... No, you story, wouldn't, no. You know, she, she makes, makes it an awful... Well, she, make, she makes a hard thing really, you know, a hard job easy. I was wondering where you were going. Man. Yeah, I'm doing, I had to check myself. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, no, Scott, don't, don't. Yeah, yeah we will. <laughs> well, as, as I said to you, like in a previous live, I, I once said for anybody that might have missed it because it's flipping brilliant. I said to camera lady, I said, "What's the what's the main thing that attracts you to Dave?" And she just went. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying nothing. <laughs> um, Osmond, the legend that is OC. Uh, Dave, ha have you successfully bred harmonicum? And if so, any tips on conditioning wise for a paired female? Unfortunately, my females molted out. Um, and then my sericata's molted out as well. So I was a bit gutted with that. So we're starting again. Um, now we've got 
Um, I've just managed to secure another three, yeah, another three harmonicons, which are sort of small juvies at the moment. And, um, and I've got two or three larger females. Um, so hopefully we'll get a male come out of that. And then, um, yeah, we'll, we'll do them again. I've also got some some small sericatas, well, juvie sericatas as well, as well as uh, two adult females. So, um, yes, it will be a case of getting on it. As we said earlier on, we've um, we've not really been uh, pairing anything for the last year, really. Um, what with moving and doing everything else, it's all been up in the air. So we're only just starting to get back on onto that um, that side of things again. Bugman. Bugman question says I have a black armored trapdoor spider that won't make a trapdoor. I've made starter holes, but they're always covered up the next day. Consistently there, there was, and I cannot remember the name of the actual species. Jeremy's in the comments, so he might remember, but there is a spider that is black and it was sold as a trapdoor, but they're not a trapdoor, they, they just build a turret. Um, work Marnie. The work Marnie yeah. can build a turret or it will build like a trapdoor, like a turret that falls over. Like they're that. More, then, they're more, like, they come yeah, out of like, what looks like a flat sock. Yeah. So they're not I've, always a true trapdoor. I've got the work Marnie and mine make um, like tunnel, tunnel webs. Oh, where's mine? Mine's only a baby, but mine's in there, and yeah. that's the opening to the burrow. Yeah, I say mine, mine literally make like webbed tubes, um, and then they, they work for them. But again, yeah, web tube, Dave, no, no trap yeah. door. And it's yeah, I think unfortunately, when they came in, Spider Shop sold them as um, trapdoor spiders, and they're, they're not really trapdoor spiders, but it, they're, more, they're more of a field spider. It pisses me off because when you've got a seller that's selling a spider that's supposed to be a trapdoor and it's not, it's fucking frustrating when you get them home. And then, like, you've got that guy going, Bugman's going, why is it made of trapdoor? It's a trapdoor spider. It was sold as a trapdoor spider. And it's one of the, it really is one of my bugbears of the hobby, is, is again, like Dave was talking about and discussing earlier, is that misinformation that's getting out there. And a lot of these sellers that import can only go off what the export is telling them. So some bloke in Africa is going, oh, I've got a thousand of these. They're all trapdoor spiders because he knows he'll get more money. So he then sells them on as trapdoors and they're not a proper trapdoor. And it lets the hobby down in the UK, I feel. Um, and it is very frustrating. Yeah, I think the, um, I mean, the ones, I've had a few of them workmen, I, and um, they, they all make like tube webs. I've, yeah. not made a, I've not had any that have made a trapdoor, um, and I, I personally, I think they're more, they're more like a wolf spider, they're more like a field spider, than yeah. um, than anything else. I mean, to be honest, I think probably mm. someone, someone like Jeremy, he's uh, probably you know one of the guys to sort of like look into them. He, that, that's right up his street, is that sort of thing, and um, you know, I'd see, be interested to see what his thoughts were on it. Me, uh, well, me, Jeremy. And another lad are going to be having a live stream coming up pretty soon on, on a Tuesday um, discussing true spiders. So Jeremy's obviously going to get a few out and we're, and we're going to have a look. Uh, I think I'm going to question him on the on the actual order of the true spiders compared to tarantulas as well. So um, I think that, that live, I mean, we did one very similar probably about a year and a half ago. Um, and that was just really, really good. So I'm hoping to get another one of those in in the next kind of month or two. Um, so please bring that question back up. Jeremy's wild world is in in the comments, so hopefully you can you can shed a bit more light on that one for you. And then also, if you're after any true spiders, Jeremy's wild world on Facebook, drop him a message. Um, he has literally got quite a few. He's got a lot of them on egg sacks and stuff like that. Um, young lad, um, but don't let his youngness um, fool you. He's highly intelligent. Highly highly intelligent is that lad. Um, <coughs> Add from Yorkshire's Yorkshire's trees. Um, I've got one of his mugs, and he's and, and he sent a, um, a tea bag out. Did I did I see the mug? Yeah, for about two minutes, and then the missus stole it. But you know, 
<laughs> Dave, fancy it's the only mug that she hasn't stole is my Dave's little beasties. <laughs> One, because I said to her, I said, "You steal that, and we're getting divorced." <laughs> you know what I mean? And if Chris's or wheels below me ever gets any mugs out, that'll be another one she won't get her fingers on. Uh, <laughs> Ad says, Dave, fancy a trip out to the wild. We have two planned for 2025. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be nice. That would be nice. Where, where, where are they going? No idea. Don't know with ads. It could be anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that'd be really cool. I think... Um, Down the pub. Yeah, yeah. I think the, uh, <laughs> the, the the difficult the difficult thing is not filling your luggage up, isn't it? Do, do you know? Oh, Chris, what do you reckon they'll let me ta say? Because Rad goes out quite a lot and all, doesn't he? Nothing. <laughs> uh, I know. I'll just say I'll just say I know Rad goes over to Borneo a lot, so that could be. A cool hookup as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Sharanka from um, Borneo, as yet, says ads. Yeah. Yeah, they'd be, um, they'd be really cool. Yeah. Has any, any of the UK lot been over to Columbia yet? No, I don't know. That would be. You know, that's where Solaris is as well, isn't it, Columbia? Um Supposed to be in Peru as well, but so if somebody goes to Colombia, uh, Solaris, stick them in your pants. Bring me. Coffee. Don't 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 try <laughs> smuggling anything back. You will get fucked as soon as you get to the UK. Um, <laughs> if you get caught in Colombia, you could end up getting fucked in Colombia. <laughs> oh, hold on, yeah, and and fuck a Colombia prison. I've seen those. Fuck that. Jeremy's Wild World says, planning to go somewhere this summer, possibly Costa Rica, maybe next year. Thailand or Malay. Nice, nice, Jezza. Go on. He told me he was going to Brighton in summer. <laughs> <laughs> you never know with Jezza. Oh. Who else we got in here? Oh, Ian Tarantula's on. He, he just said, he says... Um, I got to visit the Beastie Room this week. It was good to see you, Dave. Oh, yeah. Good to see you, matey. We'll have so to, um, we'll, we'll we'll have to sort out a proper time. We'll come around in the daytime and, yeah, we'll have a proper muck about in the day. So That'd when can right. me and Scott come over with the van? No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll come over the, with the premise like Dave. We're just going out for, for breakfast and as we're oh, out, we'll like, actually, Dave, oh, Chris, Chris has just got to go home for a little bit, Dave. That's it. That's all he's Dave, doing. He's going Dave, home actually, again. You need to send me your address. I need to send you some mails. <laughs> <laughs> just don't ask Chris for any dubia. No. <laughs> no. No, we can't. We can't. Is there um, any more questions coming up, Chris? Not at the moment. Oh, that's good. I've been let off lightly. <laughs> that means I get to ask you a couple. <laughs> People oh, get more God. questions in. Oh, there you go. Oh no. Oh, that's yeah, Bugs UK. Oh. Uh, or if um Mr. <laughs> Mitchell. Hi, guys. Oh my word. Hey Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> we all good? Hello, good? Yeah, not too bad, yeah. Much better now. I, yeah. don't, I don't know who the bloody hell let her in. <laughs> Camera lady. Yeah, I'll be having stern words with her later. Oh, well, that's divorce. That's grounds for divorce, eh, isn't it? <laughs> no, not quite. I'm not very good at cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get hasty. <laughs> you keep him chatting. I'm going to load up the car. <laughs> Bring me some as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when when are, when's Dave building the new Beastie Room? Says Ellen. Uh, as soon as I can get some money together. <laughs> Have you got channel members yet, Dave? No. no so we, we pestered you about this two years ago and last year. We're watching. I know. <laughs> no. Um, no, I haven't. Um, leave that door open. Ian, next time, message me. I'll sort it out for forty quid. <laughs> Not the car, <laughs> but they <laughs> <laughs> No, I need to. Um, yeah, we 
we're wait, we're just waiting for the weather to break a little bit at the moment, uh, get some decent weather. Because unfortunately, we've only got access through the house, so I'm sort of waiting on a bit of decent weather. But and then also, it's just going to be the finances. Is I need to the, find the out what's going to cost. How big you plan to build it? Um, at the moment, I'm looking about seven meters by four. Just, just bear, bear, bear in mind, camera ladies watching. So what it means is about fifteen meters by, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit restricted by the garden, so um, yeah. I think it, I think when I measured it out, it's about seven seven by four meters. So it's twenty three yeah. foot by thirteen foot. Yeah, something like that, isn't it? Do you want to play? Yeah. I think you'll need a bigger one. Well, yeah, yeah, bigger the better. But um, I, 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 are you building it from scratch or are you buying already like summer house style thingy? Well, we're looking ah. into um, you've seen the um, what they call them, um, these like garden offices. Oh, we, yeah, did, yeah. we did mention yeah. how many floors it's gonna uh, have, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The um, because basically, because they they do them up where they're almost habitable, you could literally move into them, you could live in them. So they're fully insulated. They do the whole thing, and they can literally build them within. I think it's three days. Yeah, they can. They yeah. can have it. Built. So the, the, the uh, roof's on in the first day. Yeah, that construction's up the first day, isn't it? And then yeah, boom, yeah. off they go. Yeah, it's really it's really quick and easy. So, uh, but obviously that comes with a price tag. They're they're expensive. So um, yeah, we might might have to have a bit of a fun page or something. <laughs> <laughs> Try and race some channel members like, off because pe people want to be David yeah. Little Beatty's channel member and, and support you. And they'll be more than happy that, that their support's gone into the beastie room. Be yeah, like, I think it's, um, that. With this... Camera lady, camera lady, go go on his YouTube and, and click yes to channel members because <laughs> you know when you've done it, because I'm I'll, I'll be the first. <laughs> You know what it's like, though. I end up bloody. Um, if I don't feel like I can offer something, then I feel a bit bad, sort of like you know, getting anything out. So. I don't, I don't, Dave. You don't realise what you do for the hobby, do you? Not, not even in the slightest. Well, it's you know, it's just bloody. You don't want to get. Uh, what are you doing with my spider? We've had a mole. You're not. I don't. Oh, yeah, oh, that's the whole picture. Yeah. Actually, come out. Can bring that out. That's all right. Uh, Os Osman said the second part of his question was any tips or conditioning wise for a paired harmonicum? Ooh. Uh, what to do with one? Yeah, so if you've got a paired harmonicum, how would you proceed to get it to drop that sack? Um, I would probably flood them out. I think I, I would really up them up and bang the temperature up as well and see what they do. That's, um, okay. yeah. You're beautiful, though. Danielle's gone looking around Dave's spiders and Dave's yeah, like, no, put that you know she, put that she don't come up here bringing good put news, does she? <laughs> she's, just, she's just pulled off my Brachypel Maroriatum off the, off the shelf, my mated female, and it's bloody molted. Would you believe it? I'll tell you, uh, who needs friends like that? And, and for, for anybody watching as well, Danielle, who's at Dave's Little Beasties tonight, that, that's Portsmouth Tarantulas. Yeah. Or Danielle is Portsmouth Tarantulas. That's it, yeah. Um, I'm the whole shop. She's the whole shop. I've, Come and say hello. I, I've said hello. I don't like being on camera. She don't, she don't like being on camera. No, she, she don't mind being a thorn in my side, <laughs> but she don't like being on camera. Yo, she, she, she showed you where the best calf is, didn't she? Mm. Oh, oh, chips. Yeah. Danielle, there's some P Metallica there what you need to bring for me. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Danielle, all, all the paired females, Danielle. Every single paired female. Yeah, they're all going to the shop. I well, have we'll, one we'll, we'll down tomorrow. before we allow anyone to leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> that, he's not looking for spiders at that point. He's just, you know. Strips no, <laughs> Danielle's like, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, it is quite warm in this room. <laughs> I leave the door um, open to let the air out. And it's like, 
they come in and they close the door behind them and bugger off. Wind up cooking. <laughs> Just one. I, I, I come back, Amy. I know. I, I know. I know. Keep um, keep putting it on you, Dave. But. Ellen just says, going back to the channel members, last comment, I promise you, Dave. No, she you says, do. what do you mean? You have so much awesome stuff on your channel. It's amazing, and we get it for free. I would love to become a member and give something back. I told you, you don't realise how much you do for the hobby and for people in general, dude. Well, yeah, I don't know. What, yeah. <laughs> people, people are like literally asking. Asking you to get this, these channel members. Oh, I've got a dog for know. sale. He's, he's going to be auctioned off. Oh, don't. <laughs> we can start the bidding now. <laughs> I'll give you 20p. All I'll he does is come quid. around and crap in my garden. He does not crap in your garden. <laughs> no, <laughs> he never crap in your garden. That's all he does. Or, do you know his other favourite <laughs> trick? He likes to get on your bed. Where I lay me moss out. <laughs> Where I lay me moss out, he'll go and have a pee on that. <laughs> uh, Trench, Trench, Trench Trench Rook has got the male. He's got a male and a female orator. He's waiting for her to molt. The male is not quite mature yet, but can't wait for that project. Me oratums are just absolutely gorgeous. Well, uh, Matt, I could uh, I can use that male when you're done with him. Yeah, he's not mature. Bugger's just molted <laughs> out. I'm absolutely gutted. Or should I just sell her? Maybe I should just sell her. I'll give you 20 That's quid for her. Yeah. Trugal, Dave, you truly don't know what you do for the invert hobby. You are our hero. Oh, you should tell camera lady that. She don't believe me. She just I, mean, I, 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 I've said it before and I'll say it again and no doubt I'll say it on our next live together. I'll use moss in my enclosures because of Dave going out and collecting moss from the wild. Prior to that, it was like, Oh, well, if you're going to use moss, you need to cook it for three days. You need to pour bleach over it to make sure everything's dead. Then you need to microwave it for a week, you know. And then Dave's like, no, you get your moss and you go in your enclosure and it's alive and it works perfect. And it was just like, it was so obvious. But it's not obvious until Dave says, you can do it. It's fine. And sometimes you need somebody who's been in the hobby for 40 years to tell you it's fine for you to go, or you right, need to be a foreigner it. like me, because for me, it was like, I'm paying that much for a moss. I'll go up to the forest and pick it up. You buy moss. That's exactly how I thought. The moss you buy is from the countryside anyway. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. The moss you buy is from the countryside anyway. I mean, all I, all I will say on moss is, is sphagnum moss, go for it. But the smaller moss species, leave them because some of them are endangered and protected in the UK. So make sure you go for that sphagnum moss. That's the one you want anyway. Swells up, absorbs eight times its own weight in water. Flipping, and it looks, oh, I love moss. I absolutely what adore moss. I do. Yeah. It says with camera lady because she's way more fun than you. She's all right, go on in, bugger off. <laughs> she's upset all my spiders. She's going to bugger off now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So J says, why don't you grow an epic beard, Dave, like Scott, ever considered it? Before you answer, Dave, I, 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 I think Cameron Lady will probably kill me. You can leave that open. Yeah. Yeah. Got another drink. Oh, I'd love one. Cup of tea, please. No, I didn't mean that. That's it. Come on, Daniel. Make the tea. I, I was just going to get you a glass of water. A fucking glass of water. <laughs> See, this is what you got to make use of them. I'm a guest. No, we have working guests here. That's it. Tea is on route. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Matt says, "Grow yourself a real one, Dave. Not lot like Scots. Don't get a clip on." <laughs> Do you know what? I think I don't know. I bet they haven't got a photo. I might have a photo somewhere with me with a beard. I did grow a beard once. <laughs> I'm not asking you this. I did. You can I read did. it because I, I see camera lady at the shows. I'm not. I'm just to highlight it, and that's all I'm doing. <laughs> Bags. <laughs> Top of the fridge. Right, okay. Google says Danielle's part of the furniture. <laughs> I mean, you, you do you do quite a bit with Portsmouth, like friendship wise, now, don't you? Yeah, yeah, we're very good friends. Um, yeah, we yeah we sort of like go out and about and spend time kicking around together. 
Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, post, I post pictures of massive breakfasts together yeah. where people <laughs> were starving. <laughs> you know, it's, like, it's nice when you got. Um, it's like because they they're not far from us, so they, you know they're, they're local, really. And, yeah, um, yeah, it's nice to sort of spend time with self, you know, people that are in the same sort of things as yourselves, and um, and we just all naturally really get on really well. So you know, we can just come around have a beer and just talk shit and. You know, that's that. and yeah, yeah, it's really nice, and um, and also as well, it's like um, like like for a uh, camera lady there, she's um, she's not the most sociable person. She she don't like a lot of people. You know, she's quite um, what's the word? Um, she's a bit of a hermit. Really. Yeah, yeah she, don't, she don't like going out too much, and um, so like for her to be able to sort of relax and really chill out is quite something special in itself. And um, yeah, so we, we all really get on really, really well. I mean, their they're little dog Charlie there, he, he literally comes up as a scream up when he when he arrives, and uh, runs around the whole bloody house. So, yeah, you know, he's like he's, he's he's like second home. I mean, in in, in life though, you know, if, if if somebody's not an animal keeper, you could tell a mile away. If they're yeah. an animal keeper, you can you can almost see it, and you think yeah. we're going to get on. Yeah. <laughs> and the non-animal keepers, you think, no, yeah. no, yeah. sorry, but no. Um, yeah. Frugal says uh, she's exactly the same, camera lady. Love chatting to you. If anybody's got any questions that we might have missed um, earlier on, please drop them into the comments. Please feel free. And uh, we'll try and pick them up. What you say, we uh, Chris? We didn't, we didn't miss any. I was just being polite, dude. You know. See, that was nice, easy one, wasn't it? Really. For now. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, how long were you in the in the zoo trade for? Oh, uh, about eleven years or so. Something like that. <laughs> Was were you with Cameron Lady at that point or? Um, the late, latter part of my zoo career, yeah, yeah, the latter part. Mm. Oh, so this is a completely this is voluntary cool process. They lay down and begin to molt, or do they think it's involuntary? A bit like going into labour. Well, they, they, they release the hormone that starts the process yeah. off. So the oh, question okay. is whether that's the spider's decision or whether that's the spider getting to a point where they feel... Camera ladies just dug this photo out well. Where, you feel, where, where maybe the spider starts feeling the movement being restricted, maybe, and then, then releases the hormone. It's a bloody good, interesting question. What do you reckon, though? Yeah, I think that's got it's got to be hormone based, doesn't it? So it's sort of like um, it is literally Jesus Christ. My camera lady has literally just brought up this photo album of me from years ago. I am not camera lady. No. Osman says quickly while his his, his comments on up on screen, then we can remove it. He says, "Will you wear his hoodie in your next video?" I've been wearing his hoodie all week. He came home from work wearing it today, didn't he? I, I, I wear it to work. I, I've, I have it on every day. I wear it all the time. Is he watching them frogs, isn't he? Because <laughs> they're making noise. He's interested. Yeah. So what's the what's the, what's the, um, the photo album? Camera ladies dug out. She's Looking dug legend out, as well. She's dug out the... Uh, these are photos Ooh. from like... Um, Will camera lady oh, give us a quick wave on the on screen? In the zoo, eh? Will camera lady give us a quick wave? She's I don't nervous. know. She's gone back downstairs now. She's um. I'll get her up in a minute. I'm coming. Oh, she's coming. <laughs> she's coming. <laughs> it's like a full on thing, isn't it? Hey there. Hi, Scott. Thank you for your lovely comments and everything. I'll get the beard picture for you guys soon. Oh, will will ya? Hey, camera lady. Still definitely too good for Dave. <laughs> <laughs> right, Scott, once he's gone, I'll come after you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a few more years in me yet. 
Go on, these are really old pictures. I was looking for the one with you, your beard, because I heard them say about your beard. And I found them. <laughs> he only does Facebook. He does not have a website yet. 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 They're really cool. Yeah. There is some others. We're playing with them in the four. Oh, is it in the same kind of album? Oh, probably. Or in the uh, Steve Tell her to take a Scott. picture and send it to me. I'll put it on a big screen. Hey? Yeah, Tell take take a picture. Take a picture. And send it to me. I'll of what? The big and then we, we can download it and put it on the big screen. Don't even. Oh, it. she's um yeah she's she's gone to have a have a look because we got we got somewhere um I think I've got some there where I was bloody swimming with elephants and stuff like that. <laughs> oh oh place. man you oh they'd be awesome. I put a couple up. Be... I put some up on my Facebook years ago with uh, me with the chimps and cheaters and all that sort of stuff. Uh, Steve says, Scott, I hope you'll have Dave on your live more often and remind him, please, to drop me an email about them that merch. Thanks and hi, camera lady. Steve, we we, we have oh, Dave will join us like four six times a year. And if if we did that more often, we wouldn't have anything to ask him. So <laughs> we, do, we we I don't know. We we'll kind of we, we we'll chat we'll chat at a show about about dave coming on a live and and then one of us will message the other one we'll get chatting about something else and then and then eventually we sort it out and that's how it's always been <laughs> it's all it's time's always been the big issue really it's, it's always i'll leave it open yeah it will. and then also we've got to find, <laughs> find a friday find a friday where we're both free as well because um on a Tuesday, obviously, Dave has to get up very early for work and what have you. So we can't expect him to be go coming on a Tuesday until till late night. Where on a Saturday, it's a, it's a little on a Friday. Sorry, it's a little bit more easier to keep Dave on for a bit longer. Yeah, I end up I'm, unfortunately with with work and what have you. We have like early starts and what have you. So it's um, yeah, it can be a bit a bit mad. Uh, Hannah says, "I still want a Dave list. How do I get one?" <laughs> Hannah, Hannah, Hannah. Uh, just, just message, message me on Facebook, um, and I'll and I'll send a list out. Um, oh yeah, Angel. Been missing Coca Cola tonight. <laughs> been having, I've been having to put up with Pepsi. Um, Eric uh, says, "Why does so many people in the hobby act?" As if you killed their dog if you tell them you don't sterilize moss and substrate that you bring in from the wild. It's, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> because the hobby itself is around pet shops which which tell everybody that it's bullshit and that so you, they can you sell buy you the moss. their expensive stuff. The thing is though, it's like, it's it's like a, a lot of the things that we see in the hobby. You know, a lot of it is just regurgitated from what people have read or they've seen, and then and it's just spread on. The big problem is an awful lot of the people that are commenting on it have had no actual dealings with it. No, nope. they're just regurgitating what they read, and this is this is the danger side of the hobby. This is this is easily destroyed. I mean, Dave, all the years you've been using moss straight from the wild without sterilizing or cleaning it in any way mm. how many spiders have directly died because they've had moss from out of the wild in your collection yeah none that i would say none and i mean i always put it down um years ago i used i used to be heavily into amphibians I used to keep a yep. lot of frogs and, stuff. and and i used i use moss with all of them and amphibians are the most susceptible to any kind of um uh poisons or anything like that that you're likely to get from anything from the wild and yet all of my tanks were completely built out of everything from the wild what you got to remember is also back when i was heavily into all that sort of stuff you didn't have the commercial stuff that you have today you know it wasn't as freely available so and what you did have used to cost a fortune and at the time i never had the money to be able to pay for these things you know i couldn't do them so i had to find my own way and do my own stuff Hence, going to the garden centre and using, you know, peat or potting compost and all these different things. These are all things that we've done for years and years and years. I can't understand why 
you would go and buy a branch when you can walk out into the wild and pick one up. It doesn't make any sense to me. Well, the, the, the same is stuff what's meant for reptiles. You can yeah. buy it in a garden shop, even in a garden shop, which is unbranded, not for reptiles, and it's exactly the same fucking thing. Exactly that. Yeah. 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 I yeah, mean, the only, thing, the only thing that I have um, found a little bit... Um, <sighs> a little, a little bit frustrating, maybe. Is is now when you go around the shows, there's people selling, you know, big lumps of like A4 size sheets of moss, and they're charging like anything from five to ten pound for a piece of moss, and I find that a little bit frustrating because the whole point of doing all of this is to actually is to make it. You know, a full, you know, so people can, you know, just go out and do their own thing, get their stuff. But there is now uh, a side of the hobby, I suppose, which is actually profiteering out, out of that that one that main thing. Um, which I'm I might dis disagree with you slightly on that, Dave. It's a little bit. The only thing, the only thing I worry about with it is if if you've got people pulling up sheets and sheets and sheets of moss and selling it. That that's not a sustain, sustainable thing, you know, and that is going to cause more harm than good. So we need to be, no. we need to be a little bit more, um, uh, you know, a little bit more sort of nature friendly, if you like, and um, and just use for our own use. I think the last show I went to, I, I saw, you know, one of the stands. I don't know who it was, but one of the stands there, and they had literally boxes of moss, boxes of it. Um, now, and I'll find that now, a bit wrong. Now, Le Lear and Terry, um, unusual pets, they've got a stand yeah. at the shows. They do bags of moss, so it's a bag. Yeah. But, but they're, 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 this is what my slight disagreement I mean, they keep their prices low anyway. But for myself, I mean, I live in Coventry City. I don't, I've, I've, these days, it can be difficult for me to get out into the countryside and find and um, an area of land where I know there's no oil, no no contaminants or anything like that. So when a bag of moss is like three quid, when Terry goes out to go and get the moss, he's on a hillside out in the middle of fucking nowhere, in the middle of Wales somewhere. Yeah. And he goes from one area to another because, again, he goes along what you're saying. He takes oh. a tiny bit from one area leaves more than what he takes so it will really grow back and then goes to another area i think i think if you go and you see let's say a meter by a meter squared moss area if you rip up the whole area and there ain't no moss left once you're finished you are an absolute cunt i think what there's you, 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 you need to leave a, a more than what you take yeah there's, there's a, yeah we're, we're talking on different levels here yes. because the um with Leah and Terry, I've seen their stuff, and it is literally like just small bags. What I'm talking about is the ones that have gone on it in an almost commercial scale. Now, when we done, when we came out, when we came out a lot like this, yeah, when we came out of lockdown, we went to. Um, I can't remember if it was either the BTS. It was either the BTS or it might have been like Brighton or somewhere. But we literally, I went with some friends and it was literally straight after, after lockdown. And, uh, well, we went, we went walking round, and there was a stand there. This was long before I had tables. I'd never done anything like that. And there was a stand there. They had, I think it was like four tables. One of them tables was nothing but moss. And they had literally trays and trays and trays of it. And they were selling it off at like, I think it was like six pound a bloody sheet or something. And as I walked past, one of the guys turned around and said, yeah, that's the bloke that makes the videos. Because my mate pulled me over. He said, have you seen this lot over here? And I went and had a look. And, he, you know, they were like, oh, that's the bloke that makes the videos about the moss. And I thought, that's someone jumping on something that I've done and now turning it into a commercial thing. Just taking the piss out of it, basically. Yeah, and that's what that's what I find a little bit distasteful. 
I think yeah, you know, if, you're, if you're keeping it small and you're doing little bits and pieces here and there, you know, you're helping people out. That I ain't got a problem with that. What I have got a problem with is people taking it at a commercial scale. Someone has gone out and spent a whole bleeding morning or an afternoon pulling this stuff up and putting in trays and trays and trays of it in the back of their van, and then they're taking it down to show for a quick buck. You know, that pisses me off. Uh, that, you know, that that is not what it's about. The whole point that, um, you know, like I've done the videos with the moss and all the rest of it, is you, you need you need to be doing it in a sustainable way. And if you just do it for yourself, or, you know, you even pull a little bit for a friend or whatever, you know, who ain't got any, it's not a problem. I have people messaging me all the time. Can you send me some moss? I'll pay whatever you want. That's not the point of it. You know, I mean, I could make a fortune out of selling mulch and moss. Yeah, easy. I could make a fortune, but you never see me selling it. You know, it's not... It's not something that's, um, you know, this this is the whole thing about sharing um, information and knowledge and stuff like that is is to make it available for for people to use and do whatever. But there will there will always be a side that will abuse it. I think I think it's the same for everything in the hobby. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Um... Kate Payne says, I've not foraged for my own stuff before, but after seeing Dave's vids, want to give it a go. Is there a peak time of year to do so? Not really. Um, any time of year is good, but you'll find winter time for moss is the best because it's really damp um, and it's cold. Moss likes it damp and cold. So uh, she's, in Nor she's in Norway, so for her. Oh, ah, right. Good. Yeah. So, I mean, crikey. In Norway, I mean, bloody hell, they they got far more open land than we have. Not uh, a long and, shot, yeah. You know, and, I'm, and I mean, she, even like uh, you, you can collect moss and that any time of year, but you'll find yeah. it at its best is 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 in the cooler months of the year. What I've done is in the back garden, um, I let some stingers grow. Yeah. So they grow. And about three quarters of the way into the summer, I cut them right down. So they're literally about this this long. And what I find is in, in September, I find the moths is then growing in between the stems. Mm -hmm. And you can literally put your hands in. You get stung to death but and then pick it off. But I'm not devastated. I'm not taking, you know, de destroy it. Because in Coventry, our parks are very small, you know, yeah. so... If 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 I took what I needed, it would make it would make a difference to those tiny little parks, um, a negative impact. You know, it, we yeah. haven't got huge open parks, unfortunately. So I mean, I, that's that's how I grow a little bit in my garden. Um, Marina, who's who does a lot of the the invert shows, blonde hair, yeah. um, normally got a cream t shirt on with the invert show. <laughs> She's a moss expert, literally, and she she grows it in her garden in. Um, in like plastic tubs, mm -hmm. um, so and and Narrowed if you give her a message, she she'll certainly give you a hand. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's just experimenting, isn't it? Again, and, and seeing how to get the moss growing. Oh yeah, um, uh, I've I found baby milk as well. Really, really helps. Oh, and uh, for the love and the money, I'd like to give credit to the person that I got the information from. It was it was a website, and I can't I can't even find it again unfortunately um but it was on there and i've tried a bit of that in the actual enclosures and i've seen a little bit of difference in the growth um but yeah it, it's it's good stuff but like you said people just ripping out meters and meters and meters to sell it six part of a sheet at a show is is taking the fucking piss man yeah i think so i think it's it's just i don't know i just i just find it a bit you know if if, if we all went out and took a little bit here and there it's not going to make any difference in the grand scheme of things I mean, I'm lucky where I live, you know, I, I'm, I'm surrounded by, you know, the new forest and I, I, I've got everything around me. So, and it's like for those guys that live in Wales and places like that, you know, they're in optimum prime country for it. And you, you know, you can't really do any harm. There's just so much of it. Um, but even in those areas, if you had someone coming down and filling up boxes and boxes and boxes, how often can you do that before you decimate areas? 
Of course, it's all gone. Right. Yeah. And and it's all it's all in the name of you know it's it's, it's jumping on that bandwagon and trying to make a few quid. Now, I've got no arm with you know people trying to make a living or whatever, but you know you you got to have some morals behind it as well. Uh, okay. I am going to be disappearing. Okay. Bye to everyone. Just before Chris shoots off, um, Chris's channel, Chris's on Wheels, does live pairings normally on a Friday. Um, but like I said, Dave has to go up early for work on a on a Wednesday, so we 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 we, we swap with Chris. It's normally Chris's evening, and on Chris's channel, like I said, he does a lot more pairings. So if you're into that. Please drop Chris a subscription and hopefully see you a week today on Chris's channel. You pairing anything up next week, Chris? Stevie, Polcha, Trigonuselli, both Roseas, and a couple more. I can't remember. Nice. Can't remember. Good luck. <laughs> I, 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 I yeah. normally join, join Chris on a Friday, then he'll join myself on a Tuesday. and. It's pairings if, if and, 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 and we we'll have a bit of a laugh. From uh, Dave, then about 40 as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, we're, we're getting sorted. Yeah. Right, everyone. I'll see you all next week. Have a good weekend. Thank all you right, everyone. Chris, Thank you, you mate. Ta -ta. See you in a bit. Bye, bye. <laughs> hmm. Um, Ellen, how often do you need to clean the enclosure, not just the glass, but change everything? Um, that depends on really how you're keeping them, doesn't it? If you've got uh, sort of like more of like a bioactive thing, then if it's growing, there is no need to clean it. Yeah, there is no need to clean it. The good thing is, is with your spiders, is that they're not generally dirty or messy. So they make most of the stuff goes on behind the scenes, if you like, with the webbing and everything else. Can you tell uh, my face art of that? Oh, yeah. They'll, that. Come out, they'll come out and fire it all up the glass. But it's it. She literally sits on the on the back of the enclosure, points her ass towards the front and just goes... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's easily dealt with, you know? When we're talking about like, the substrates and the, the bits and pieces inside the tank, you know, I mean, I, I've had tanks that are run for... You know, three, three, four years before before touching them. The only ones that do get really messy and dirty, I think, are the Balfouria, pretty horrible. Um, and also, sometimes things like OBTs and stuff, they can be a bit messy. Some of the Avix can be, but it's more unsightly rather than messy, just because they're, yeah. they're mostly old, you know. I mean, they're happy. It's, it's just our perception again, isn't it, I suppose? Yeah. I mean, generally speaking... If I start to think it's looking a bit tired, then I'll get in and revamp it and do something with it. You know, it's not going to make any difference to the spider. Spider, spider ain't going to give a shit. <laughs> no. No, no. And even if, um, quite often, if it's in one of my um, one of my bigger exos or whatever, then quite often what I'll do is I'll I'll wait. I'll, I'll get the spider will um, go and hide in its favourite spot, and then I'll rip out everything around it. And then I'll just leave that one little spot the same. And I'll rebuild it all around it. And it won't come out. It'll just sit in there and it'll hide away until when it's all gone quiet and at night time, it'll come out and uh, have a look at what I've done. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, don't don't worry about ripping them all out. No, I think I've pulled out the odd plant that's passed away in an enclosure. But generally, I'll do the same. Just, yeah. just go in. And when they're finished with the roach, you've got that bulbous mess. Yeah. Take that out with the tongs and leave them to carry on. That's all um, I do with, with all my glass enclosures, like with the moss and all that. You'll find that the boluses are all normally thrown out on the moss. And that's all I do is I, I just pick them up as I'm doing me, me you know, me maintenance. And, uh, yeah, that's enough. Is there some more to that question, Raphael? It says, Scott, Dave, I have an idea for a subject that could be discussed here in the future videos. Something I've learned the hard way. It is all nice to build an enclosure, but one should think half. Yeah, what's where's the where? oh, one out of two, and then goes two out of two. Sorry, ah. um, of the day of the day when it will need to be rehoused, like with a Metallica with a hu huge block. Are, are you? Do you mean when you? You put your spider into an enclosure 
and it and it's a small enclosure because your spider's small but then you you also need to be thinking about the larger enclosure for when your spider gets bigger um of the or world. are you or are you looking along the lines of if you've got a a completely made up enclosure it's going to get it's going to be harder to capture that spider and rehouse it is that what he means i had um when i rehoused the metallica the first time wouldn't come out the court bark and then when it come out the court bark could i how catch it get really back oh. in the court bark when it, when it was out the court bark it was sitting on the side of the enclosure i took the lid off i filled the cork tube with soil so when it went to go back in again it couldn't get in and i was like nah, i got you little shit <laughs> with, the, with a catch cup um think, it should I be think... easily adapted to deal with the species he says yes ah got you yeah yeah so if you look at um you look at some of my earlier videos especially in the exos that the 30 by 30 by 45s where i've done them up for pokies um and things like that uh singapore blues they they're all done in a way that you know you can you can you can easily sort them out um but the main thing to remember is is if you've got your spider in there and it's now time to move your spider you're going to disband that enclosure anyway so all you would do is take out everything that you can leaving your spider in place in its favorite hiding spot take out everything else and then when you come down to almost a bare tank then you would then move the area that it's actually hiding in and you've got an empty tank to catch your spider so it shouldn't really be any issue it should be nice and easy i'm hoping i can do this uh, um... Jesus Christ, you got a twig. No, well, it's not doing it for me. Ah. Right, so let me see if I can. Uh, yeah, screen. Uh, uh, that one. Yeah. Can we see that? Yeah. So when we were on about moss earlier, um, Trond was said there's a company where he lives in Norway which grows moss for buildings. And they cover the buildings like we can see on the screen in moss. Yeah, they Wouldn't do a lot of this they do a lot of this in America as well, don't they? Where they literally it's have they have massive planted walls so things like on um, bridges and buildings office blocks and all that sort of stuff they have these massive planted walls and it's also supposed to, supposedly to help with the ozone and all that sort of stuff you know you're you're creating more more greenery which is in terms in in fact living and, and breathing and um yeah it's putting more co2 back into the 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 um the atmosphere and making kind of almost mini environments for more creatures well, because if you if you cover a building in moss you attract insects and then that in turn yeah. attracts birds and so forth yeah. and so on plus a lot of buildings for, for me anyway personally are some a lot of buildings are just horrible to look at when when they're covered in moss yes yeah um and as long as it's looked after correctly because i've seen there's one in coventry um it's not a building it's just this big um like art thing basically it was a massive bumblebee and they covered it in moss and they put it literally in an area where it's in direct sunlight all day every day and it's all yeah. died and, it, and it's just looks like a mess now yeah so you, really, you you have to do some thought to it you have to make sure you've got some prep there uh pumpkin patch that that's not a debate i'm going to get into it says how reliable would you say some of the us youtubers are for information and then named a couple yeah i don't i'm not going to get into into that one to be honest um you did mention tom moran who who i who i who i follow if that helps you 
um, the Trancher Collective. We've had him on a live before he came to the to the London show. Um, but yeah, Bastian says, "What's Dave's favourite beverage?" Tea. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a minute. You can't just say tea. <laughs> you can't just say tea. What what tea bags are you using, Dave? Oh, bloody hell. Uh, oh, honey, PG. Yeah, PG. Oh, get off the channel. <laughs> You're not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Yorkshire, Dave. Yorkshire tea. Yorkshire tea. There's only one tea, and it's Yorkshire. <laughs> Actually, my, my, my favourite, I, I do like Doombar. I love Doombar. Doombar's nice too, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I like Doombar. Yorkshire's better. I think if, yeah, if the wife had heard that one, she'd be saying the same as well. <laughs> uh, my first, what was that one? I just think I missed one. I've been drinking Yorkshire tea too, says Metal Theologian. Yes, sunshine. Go on. <laughs> Of course we have. Ah, Raphael. Raphael says, um, my first pokey, I had a huge stump that needed to be removed whole in a strange angle. And that is not that easy with a pokey. With a more sedate species, it would have been less of a problem. Oh, mate, let, let, let me just tell you the story of me rehousing a female the other night. So I like to leave the egg sacs in with the females. So I left the Hattie Hattie egg sac in with the female. And I thought, oh, she'll come straight out. She'll be, she'll be a darling. Yeah, bollocks. Took me, I think it was an hour and a half by the time she was in the catch tube. But um, I get what you're saying, though, Raphael. Yeah, you could look at going at, at kind of what Dave's doing, set up a smaller enclosure, knowing that you're going to have to rehouse it at some point. So bear that in mind as you're setting it up. Um, I like the challenge. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> what you gotta think of as well is like if you if you go back to some of our early videos, the first year, you would have seen we moved uh pokies, sabar blues, um maculatas, feather legs, everything. And we, we picked them all out on bits of wood and showed you them, and they're all nice and calm, nice and gentle, you know, and these these were all big so-called nasty old worlds and we literally just moved them around and they didn't bolt they didn't do anything they just sat there nice and calm you know so i think it's um you need to look at everything as an individual and then look at your ability and how comfortable you feel you are and then go from there you know forget all the hype because you know there's there's very few spiders that are as bad as the hype makes out you know so you need to just sort of do do your own thing, really. I, I think if you if you are going to pull out a spider that's sitting on the court bark, be prepared for it to bolt just in case. Be prepared for it mm -hmm. to give you a threat pose. Be prepared for it to stick its fangs in you because at the end of the day, you, you're then taking the spider from a comfortable position um, to an uncomfortable one. And just bear that in mind, though. Dave's got forty years of experience behind him. You know what I'm saying. So if yeah. you if you if you if you're new to the hobby, don't just carry on using your catch cups for now. The uh, point the point I was trying to make though is that many many of these spiders, their reputations are oh. very very different to how they actually are. And this is something we've tried to show on the channel with all the different spiders that we deal with. Um, is that, you know, a lot of people are actually terrified of their spider before they even get it. And this is because they follow the hype and the, the scaremongering and what have you, and sometimes even just the advertisements to sell the spiders, you know, and then and then they go and get one. And, um, you know, they're worried about it straight away. You hit the nail on the head. It's the adverts to get you to buy them. This is the most ferocious spider you'll ever come in contact with. If it come, if it escapes, it will bite you ten times. It will, it will, you know, run off with your gran. You'll never see her again, and all the rest of it, and blah de blah de blah. And yeah. 
you know, and the typical one is your OBT. And you get your OBT home and you rehouse it, all the rest of it, and you're like, hold on a minute, it hasn't run out of the glass. It's not broke the glass. Mm. It, it, it's webbed up and it's actually chilling. And every time I put anything in for it to eat, it comes and has it, yeah. But that's it. When I walk past it, it doesn't threat pose me. What's going on? And like Dave said, a lot of it's just bullshit to sell the old yeah. world. I think the I think the important thing is is for is for people to um, to learn at the right pace, you know. So you know, move at the right pace, and then um, as you become more and more comfortable, then you know, move on and, and try something new. But I think many people they buy first and then ask questions later, and quite often or not. They, they end up with stuff that is a little bit out of their comfort zone. So this is the thing. You want to try and stay within your comfort zone and grow gradually, you know. So I can I can remember, you know, 40 years ago, everything used to make me jump, you know. Well, yeah, of course, yeah. Gotcha. But, you know, over the years, I've learned that it's, you know, it's not necessary. I can do things in a different way. So it's – um this 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 is the big thing you, you know move at your own pace that's that's the big thing pumpkin patch inverts um says i feel like i'm asking way too many questions no you're never asking too many questions oh, no. um but i haven't been in keeping long uh me and my partner have 12 between us but is there any like basic advice you can give me worries they aren't really worries um what are you worried about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like my, my, my advice would be if you're going to move into having a larger collection, one, if the spiders are all small, have you got room for that amount of adults in the adult enclosures? And then the other one would be make sure that you've either got roach colonies that are sustainable or you've got the funds each month to be feeding them as well as. And obviously that heating bill as well is going to go up the more you get. Um, and that, that my advice is just to make sure that you can deal with um, a bigger collection before kind of getting one, if if that makes um, much sense to you. Yeah, definitely. I, I, think don't what, I, don't know. I don't know what you think, Dave. Yeah, I think it's very much. I think it's um, – unfortunately, the, the hobby that we're in is quite a compulsive hobby, you know, and the shows, to be to some extent, don't help because you know you're you're spoiled for choice. There's so much stuff about, um, and obviously people buy a lot of slings because they're cheaper, and you can get more for your money. So when you go for a day out, you know you can go and buy one adult spider, or you can buy thirty slings. You know, and some for some people, thirty slings is much more exciting. But then, them thirty slings will grow up into something, and. Uh, they all need housing and looking after and what have you. So, yeah, it's we have, we have to show a little bit of responsibility in, um, in in where we go and what we do with it all. Personally, when it comes to slings, I don't advise them for for newbies or people getting their first spiders because mm -hmm. one, as a newbie, you're not going to see them as often. So then they're not big, they're not out, so they can get a bit boring. So they can taint the hobby a little bit for yourself but then they're a lot more fragile as well so i always say look go for go for like you know at least a two inch spider because then you're going to see it you know you've got something to show the missus or the or the husband or or the partner your friends your family and stuff like that when they come around as well instead of just you know um oh my god where's my slim instead of going there's my spider you know, you can show them one of these enclosures instead and go, well, there's my spider. How beautiful is that? Yeah. And then once you get a bit more experience, then move into the slings. I don't get why there's there's the mystery boxes that state beginner. It, they shouldn't ever be saying beginner on a mystery box, I don't think, because of that reason. Um, and I got I got slated to death by an American um, uh, like supplier for, for literally released a video saying, you know, slings aren't for beginners. And when it got advertised on an on a on a different Facebook group, they commented and they were, yeah, people want to watch them grow from the start. Rah rah rah! Really had a go at me. 
and my reply to that was please watch the video and then come back and comment because they hadn't watched the video they just automatically assumed the word sling and um, yeah. automatically assumed that i said no to all slings and it, and it wasn't the case because when you get a sling they can be almost eggs with legs they can be very very small and in that video i just suggested that new you know if you're going to come new to the hobby then you get a sling get a grown-on sling because the smaller slings are definitely not for beginners um and and let's face it if you buy a sling and it's your first one and it passes away you're going to be upset and it could put you off off the hobby yeah um, no it's very it's a very valid point and um you know it's 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 important that you know that newbies are encouraged to go in the right direction and you know and and you know sort of small juvies upwards is is really the way to go you know because like you say it's that i mean even even like for myself we can have times where with slings we can lose percentages of slings for no oh, apparent course, reason yeah. you know they just they just go and um and it's and it's mind-boggling sometimes you know and and it's even worse if you if you've only got two or three slings and that is that is your collection and you lose one or two of them you know that's that's a good you know that's, that's the best part of your bling collection gone so it's it's not it's not going to do your confidence a lot of good whereas many of the juvies they're already past that critical stage and they're looking strong and like you say you get to see them and you can show them off and you know you can actually learn an awful lot more from that. You won't necessarily learn much from a very tiny sling up to like a small juvie. You know, it's, it's a different thing. And this is, um, you're not going to learn too much in the way of maintenance or, or, or general husbandry as such. They in very, very early stages. You know, it's more they important you learn what goes on afterwards just while you're addressing the newbies about the slings i'm just going to pop the toilet i'll be literally two minutes <laughs> bust, busting for a wee <laughs> <laughs> um but while i'm gone tron has asked you know what tron's like you know what tim's like in the comments tim baxter's still watching as well both of them um are overly scorpion crazy yeah. and tron said so dave how are the scorpion how are the scorpions doing Oh yeah, the the, um, they're, yeah they're doing really well. We got um, the youngsters are growing well now, um, so we're still keeping them on pre-killed food, um, but they're growing growing really really well. Um, and I've found over the years I've had much better success by giving them pre-killed rather than letting them hunt for themselves. I found when we allowed them to hunt for themselves, we would end up with losses. And this was possibly due to um, uh, deaths through starvation. So what we do now is we pre-kill all the food. And then I I keep my enclosures very simple, as you would have seen in the video. We literally have um, potting compost in there, a small piece of oval bark that goes flat to the floor. Because as you remember, um, we said in the videos that scorpions, they like to squeeze into a crevice. Uh, where they got contact top and bottom um and and this is this will you can achieve that by a piece of bark on the flap on the uh potting compost or whatever your substrate may be and then um and then all we do then is we just we put our pre-killed food items normally i use even for the tiny um scorpions i use big big fat crickets or um, red runners or whatever but soft bodied and then what i do is i split them open and leave them just oozing out on top of the bit of bark and then come the morning you normally you will find everything's gone and if you just pick up your bark check underneath you'll find a bunch of fat little scorpions and i don't have no trouble with cannibalism either doing it this method they've they've all proved really really good um that's not to say that some scorpions may you know they may prove to be different they, they may prove to be a little bit more cannibalistic but the ones that i've that i've done have, have been okay it's mainly forest style scorpions and things like that 
I've not really done much in the way with the desert scorpions. Um, so I've not, I've not actually bred them like the hairies and stuff like that. I've not done them before. So uh, it would be interesting to see how, how they respond. But I would personally, I would probably follow the same sort of system that I use with the Asians with the pre-killed food. And I think it does really, really well. I did, but it says, got um, yeah, the uh, Chaclade sling delivered today from Tarantula Room. Going to be a permanent sling. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just remember, though, if you, you know, keep them warm, keep them well fed, they will grow. They will grow. Oh, my word. Eric. <laughs> Scorpions are wonderful. If I had the space, I'd keep some again. Used to keep Swarm and Army some years back. That literally a dream scorpion. That, that's every well, scorpion just, keeper's they, dream. There is just none of them around. You know, they're just not available in any numbers. I know there's some in Europe. Um, some in the UK. Tim's, yeah. Tim's actually got Tim's, some. And, yeah, uh, so, you know, if anyone's going to, yeah, if anyone's going to breed them. Tim, Tim will get there. There's him and a couple of others that are sort of, I think they've joined up and uh, they're going to be trying to do a project on those, um, which it, it can only be a good thing. You know, the, and this is one of the things, <laughs> scorpions have never really had the same kind of exposure that, that our spiders have. No. You know, so there is a, there's, there's very limited uh, knowledge and, um, and up until recent years, there's been very limited interest, you know? So it's only since they've been brought to the forefront by people like Tim and that, um, that are actually highlighting just how, you know, crazy awesome things they are. They really are cool. Tim's got three adult females. If anybody's got a male, please give Tim Baxter a, a message. Tim Baxter Scorpions on Facebook. Um that would be awesome because to see some scorplings of those captive bred in the hobby would be literally a lot of people's dreams come true. I think it's very important that we try and get get a male to hook up with his three females. And I would just like to say, if you are successful, I want to be first on the list for some youngs. <laughs> Tim, Tim, put him second. Second on that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sure. I'm sure if it's if it's going to happen, Tim will make it happen. There's George as well. I don't know if George has got any, but he's bloody amazing with the score. Sometimes works next to Tim on CFTM. Yeah, the Italian guy. Yeah, yeah he knows this stuff and all that bloke does. This is what you need. You see, you need you need these people that are really passionate and. Be you together know, and really in there, get them together and, and get this stuff going because it's you know that's that is where it's all going to happen. You know, I think we had this conversation once before with like like with the zoo world. You know, the zoos get an awful lot of credit for for different Not things, well. but the vast majority of the successes have come from private individuals. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's, it's it's the private sector that do most of the breeding of pretty much everything. I find, yeah, that you, you see the zoos doing something, they write a paper, blah de blah de blah, and you think, you weren't the first. That's been done in the hobby. Yeah. That was bred by, you know, John up north or fucking Dave yeah. in London or whatever, you know, you think, yeah. don't be, you seriously put that out as you've done that? No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Happens all the time. No, Tron says, Dave, Dave, I'm number one on that list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Good night, Paul. Yeah. I said it um, the last the last live we did last year, Dave. When we get in the camera lady T-shirts. Oh, yeah. Well, to be fair... As you know, we, we, we do like a little a little selection of merch and bits and pieces. And um, actually, talk oh, right. We um, I am looking into getting some t-shirts done with some of our spiders on them. 
Um, but there'll be full, proper, professional photographs of, of our spiders. Uh, so I've already got the images. I've done all of that. Um, and now it's basically looking at getting them onto T-shirts. But to give you an idea, it's not it's not a cheap process. So for like, this will put it into perspective for people, really. <laughs> to, to do one photograph. Dave's got, Dave's got the crickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, uh, oh. To do one photograph, right, for argument's sake, say we have a T-shirt with a Sturmy on it, yeah? To do, to do that, we then need five in each size. Oh. So you got from extra small right the way through to 5XL. Yeah. And you want you want five in each. So if you do if you do that, you're not looking far short of um, I think when we worked it out, I think you're you're getting on for nearly a grand. Wow. So it's very, very expensive. So and also as well, because of all of our all of our merch, so all of our T-shirts, our hoodies and everything, they're all retail quality. So they're just like you'd go and buy off Super Dry or whatever. They're retail quality clothing. Um, and, it, and you know, to do that one image in one in five, say because there's no point having one T-shirt in a large, because if once it's sold, it's sold. It's gone. Yeah. So you really need five of each, each yeah. size. Of course, yeah. the price goes up. I've got now probably 60 70 images that i've got available but you can see where the outcome you know the cost comes in it's very very expensive uh one thing that we did do though which i'm hoping uh it proved to be quite popular when we were at the taunton show is we've actually done our our own um care cards so you know like the old uh, keeper cards like yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, what you got out there, we we've done our own ones, um, and we were we put them out for the first time at Taunton, and uh, they proved really popular. We've got twenty species at the moment, um, and if they if they prove to be to be popular, then uh, then we'll we'll increase that and and pretty much cover most of them. Tim says could be like the I shot JR t shirts in the eighties on the real camera lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I think, I think I think just the image, like like the outline of a camera being held with two hands, yeah. and then just camera laid it. Mate, that would be awesome. See, the thing is, it's 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 literally though, like I was saying, for that one image to do a run of t-shirts, you're looking at like nearly a thousand pound. I will say this though. I mean, the I mean that Taunton, I bought one of Dave's woolly hats. Uh, one of his beanies, and it is literally one of the warmest hats I've ever ha had in my life. It, it, when it's really, really cold, to stick it on, and you can mm. guarantee as soon as that temperature rises slightly up, it's like, wow, this hat's really warm, and it does <laughs> make a hell of a difference. Because you can tell the difference. I mean, you buy it, you buy some, you buy a cheap woolly hat. It's not keeping you warm, but I was really impressed. Really impressed. That's good. How I mean, much was, was it? Was it 12, 12 quid? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I can't remember now. And in the UK, twelve quid for a woolly hat that actually does what it's supposed to do yeah. is in the bargain. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's um, uh, you know I've we kept that one in the work van so the missus don't nick it. <laughs> <laughs> we do nice white ones for the ladies. Amy's just said she's got three white and two black beanies from you. Yes, yes, yeah, she picked them up at the last show. Yeah, she ordered them beforehand to make sure that we had them. So yeah, yeah, yeah pretty awesome, awesome. Yeah, I got the got the got woolly at um, one of your mugs now, haven't I? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I want to. Oh yeah, I want a beast. I want a. I want a beastie hat, but I'm not allowed on Facebook. Says Joe. What do you mean you're not allowed on Facebook? Just load up, make an account, and whoever's telling you're not allowed on it, give them the finger. <laughs> uh, Just message me, message me on someone else's account. It doesn't matter. 
Yeah, that's wicked. Metal Theologian says, where are the shirts selling? Would it be worth printing some in the US? If so, I have a hookup. <laughs> that 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 could be wicked, Dave, because then you're not posting them from the UK. They just go from the US to the US. Now, that, that, that would be a sensible thing, actually, yeah. When yeah, the... we, up, we, we, um, when we done our calendars, we, we, we done a whole load of calendars and I ended up having to do a second run because they sold out and then the second run sold out as well. And, uh, and then we stopped. We was like, no, I can't do any more. We literally done a lot of them and, um, yeah, an awful lot of them got sent abroad all over the world, different countries all over the world. Absolutely amazing to, uh, to see. It was really, really good. Uh, so yeah, we 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 really appreciate our our foreign subscribers because um, obviously they can't do anything spider wise and they don't get to go to the shows and stuff like that. So the merch is the only thing they can really you know get a part of really. And um, yeah, it's 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 an amazing thing. We're gonna um, when when my room comes up again, we're gonna do another map. But I'm thinking I want to change it. I want a I want a proper wall map, like a a wall map, and um, yeah, and then I'll, and then we'll, we'll we'll get everyone to um, pass on where they come from again, and uh, I mean last time when we done it when we done it last time, I mean there was it was amazing to look on that map and you're like it's only these tiny little countries that we ain't actually got subscribers in, you know it was just incredible, you know we I mean we've literally got them from like Russia, China, Japan. Uh, we had one in Korea, um, Australia, New Zealand, all over America. I mean, America was just full all over. Uh, what was it? Greenland, Iceland. Uh, it was just incredible. And and I'll be honest, it gave me an absolute kick every time. I'd sometimes on a quiet moment, I'd just sit and look through the through the map, and I'd be like, oh, I can't believe we've got someone over there, you know. <laughs> It was just amazing, absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing. It was, I think it was probably one of the best ideas we ever come up with was to uh, oh, yeah. get people to tell us where they were. I mean, you're, I mean, you're fast approaching 90,000 90, subscribers. Yeah, yeah. Ah. yeah. <laughs> and do you know what? It still, it still, um, it still shocks me. I, I still... I'm just sort of like, it's just, a, it's just incredible. It's, uh, it's an amazing thing, and to, and to think that you know, it's quite, there's quite a lot of those, those people I speak to like through Messenger, you know, and you know, and it's nice. You know, some people will be like, oh, we've been watching you for three years, and you know, we've been doing this, that, and the other, and you know, some of them I, I feel like I know more about their family than I do my own. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I know that one. Yeah, it's it's yeah. just it's yeah. just mad. And, and you know what? It's it's a very humbling thing that when people share not only the good times in their lives, but also the bad times. You know, and we've had we've had people messaging us and saying, you know, they've had loved ones that have passed and they're going through a rough time or whatever, you know. And um you know, I know I don't know, I, I look at that and I I just think to myself, you know, I I don't necessarily know these people, you know, but they've reached out and they feel comfortable in sharing something that was so private, you know, and they're now yeah. sharing with me, who, is, who to all intents and purposes is a, um, a stranger, really, apart from what they see on the on YouTube. And, um, yeah, it's a very, very humbling thing. You know, so it's, a, it's an awesome thing. And then, of course, you, oh, you, yeah. you get the you get the exciting the fun side as well like you know where you know like we've said earlier on you know kids that have got got spiders and they're breeding their own spiders and stuff like that you know and it's i mean i get i get a lot of people sit there and go oh my my three-year-old loves your channel it's the only hour of the day he's quiet you know because they literally put it up on the thing put little johnny in front of the telly and they go off and do the oeuvre you know and it, <laughs> it's like my, my, my lad is nearly four and he watches the videos and he's like daddy and then he's spiders and then i'm like that's my boy yeah <laughs> <laughs> tara sent me a picture because he'd gone into nursery 
And there he is, and he's like this up to the camera, and he's got a handful of moss out of the nursery garden oh, for the spiders. Man. I was at work, and I was like, oh, shit. And the lads <laughs> were like, what are you crying about, you soft bastard? I was like, you fuck. Brilliant. Can we go, go back to those personal encounters? I mean, the last what, two months, I've had to take a little step back because I... I was like that close to being mentally burnt out because, it, it, as you know, I mean, um, with drugs in the history and stuff like that, and a lot of mental health. Yeah, you know, I will talk to everybody and everybody, and, and um, I'm literally just coming back to a point where I can start redoing that again. But I don't know. I don't know, Dave. Do, do you find a lot of people kind of inbox you just for some emotional support sometimes, or sometimes? Yeah, I mean, it's I. <sighs> It's a very difficult thing because I've had um, I, I've had a different sort of upbringing to a lot of people, and um, and it's made me who I am, you know. And I'll be honest, I think um, I think unfortunately we've we've sort of we've almost cultivated a, a society now that feels like it needs a label for everything. Yeah. And it's, and then, you know, I've got people that are very close to me that have serious issues and problems and, you know, and I'll fully support them. Unfortunately, there is also a huge amount of people in society that jump on the bandwagon and abuse it. Oh, fuck yeah. You know, and some it's of them is just because they can't be asked to get off their ass and get a job. You know, and it's and it's that sort of thing, and you know, it hits home sometimes with me. And when I look at, um, let me just say to anybody watching, this is literally for for people that are chatting shit half the time, just for the attention, or just to sit there really? like Dave said. Yeah, the people with genuine issues, we are both there for them a hundred percent. Oh, definitely. But, yes, but on, yes. what Dave's talking about, I've witnessed and I've seen myself, mm. and it, and yeah, it is. Fucking irritating. It is, it is. It is irritating, and I think the um, you know, it's like things change over times as well. You know, I come from a an era where um, you know, you were sort of like you know, in a way, we you know, we we had to stand and do our own thing. So we all suffer with things in different degrees, and we all deal with things in different degrees. You know, and that's that's the important thing. But I think it's um. Unfortunately, as a, as a lot of people, it's, it's, it's just too easy, you know. Sometimes sometimes people need to take responsibility for their own actions and their own, you know, their own lifestyle and everything else, and they, and they need to, to work that out. And if you need help to do that, then that's fine, you know. That's a good thing. Tony, I mean, I know Tony personally. She is literally such a lovely girl. Uh, she's just nailed it on the head. There's too many people who make mental health a trend, and it, and that that's true. And then that's, for people that actually need the support, right. they're not getting getting it. Yeah, yeah. This is this is the whole. This is what I'm trying to say. You know, we've we've got a system that is being absolutely hammered, and um, you know, and the people that really really need it aren't the ones getting it because do you know what? The ones that really need it aren't always the ones that are really asking for it because they don't feel in a place to be able to ask. Whereas the other ones are all like, oh, yeah, I can get a few quid for that. I need that. You know, and they're in there. It's a bit like the moss collecting, you know. We won't go out and take a little bit for our tank. What we do is we'll get a transit load and flog it at the show. You know, it's like it's exactly the same sort of scenario. It's the same mentality. You know, we've got people that abuse it. And unfortunately, that takes away from those that really need it. And um, I say I get I get messages from people uh, with all sorts of different things, and you know it's you can you know we're, we're always there to help if you know if, if anyone's genuine and uh, you know they just just need someone to have a chat with or whatever. Um, I, the only thing I will say is I'm I am pretty blunt and upfront, so you know again I, again no bullshit. Yeah, I don't see the point. I don't no. see the point. You know, it's, um, you know, I, I don't think anyone benefits from 
from having smoke blown up their ass. You know, I think if, if you've got problems, then, you know, be a part of the solution. Don't make it worse by just agreeing with everything that they're saying. That doesn't help. I mean, I know you're personally, so I think, I think we've both had things go on in lives where we could have either been dead or been in a hell of a lot worse situation what we're in now. Mm. Um, I mean, well, I was homeless for, for a while, 10 years ago, and on drugs. Yeah. Um, and I tell you what, 10 years ago, I never thought I'd, I'd, I'd be clean and be married and have an amazing spider collection and some of the best friends I've ever met through, through a spider hobby, I tell you that. Yeah, because I, I rattled off, I rattled off the drugs and I rattled off all the prescription meds all in the same two weeks. And at the end of those two weeks, somebody gave me two spiders to look after, and I ended up keeping. He ended up saying, "Look, just keep them." And I can honestly say that's really fucking supported me. The spiders did, yeah, and they still do. And every time, if I want a break from, I find, I find normal life really really difficult to get on with really difficult to manage really difficult to understand um uh, my wife's very understanding of it because she knows i struggle with family life sometimes mentally and and coming into this room with my spiders gives me that break so i can do life and it might sound strange to some people i know it, well i know we're doing i do apologize but that that's what they've done for me um yeah. You should never, you should never apologize. You know, you you found something that um, that helps you deal with whatever it is that you're going through at the time. You know, and what and the other thing to remember as well is it's like bloody, um, you know, to think that you know you've changed your life. Like you say, ten years ago you were a completely different person, and uh, and and look at where you are oh. now. And that should give hope to, to loads and loads of other people. You know, and, and I always say to people, it doesn't matter how you get there as long as you get there. You know, it doesn't really matter how you go about it or, or who helps or whatever. It's how, it's how you get to the end, you know. We all have our different ways of doing things. Like for me, when things are troubling me in, in past years or whatever, I'm very insular. So, like... I'll, I'll shut down yeah. and I'll, I put myself away and then I have a serious chat with myself, you know, and this is how I've always been, you know, and I'll sit there and like, you know, I might sulk about it for a few days and then in the end, I'll, you know, in the end, I'll just get up and I'll say, look, look, Dave, for, for, you know, for fuck's sake, just sort yourself out, get out there and face it head on. But I'm quite, um, I can be quite sort of like in your face character, if you like, I, I can, you know, and I'm not, um, I'm not timid in that way. So I'm quite, quite, I can be quite forceful if you like. And, uh, and, and that's, that's always worked for me, but it doesn't, it doesn't work for everybody. Everyone's got their own ways, but it's, no, no. you know, you should never be hard on yourself. Every, every little step is a, is a good thing. And we're all, we're all brought up differently. I mean, when when I was a kid, my my father was a real authoritarian. I mean, oh, to, the point, to the point where oh. you know we used to get proper beatings, you know, oh, yeah. um, yeah. with the buckle end of the belt and stuff like that, you know. And, and, uh, and for, for the younger lot, you'd go to school with fucking bruises on your legs, wouldn't you? Yeah. And the teacher wouldn't batter an eyelid, wouldn't ask you where they come from, wouldn't wouldn't send social services to your house or anything like that. You would go home and shit yourself every time you did something wrong. Well, if we had, when I was a kid, if we had another adult or a policeman or whatever knock on that door, oh mate, my oh. Old, my old man would drag me out and in front of that copper would batter me for bringing oh, my trouble to the door. You I know? got the kicking of my life because yeah. somebody else's dad come to my house yeah. and said, you didn't kick off. He just said, look, you know, Scott's had a fight and he beat my son up. My stepdad told me, if anybody ever picks on you, pushes you or punches you, you punch back, you fight back. So mm. I followed what he said. Yeah. And then when that, this lad's dad knocked the door, he couldn't have been any more apologetic. And as soon as the door shut, I got the kicking of my life. And that's when it worked out. He was a bully. 
and yeah. weren't wasn't able to stand up to anybody that 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 literally showed him any authority in any way, shape, or form. He was just a coward. Yeah. Um, but go back, go back to the mental health. I see a lot of people saying they've they've they're um, been diagnosed with different things. Um, I have. I've been diagnosed with quite a few different mental health disorders over the years, and I like to say my name's Scott. I'm a little bit different, and <laughs> I. I that's how I get through it. And that really, really helps me. I've done all the talking therapy years ago and now I do what, what Dave does a lot. And that's just a re recluse into myself. <laughs> Excuse me. And it's not a worrying time. It, it's it, that is just me going, all right, well, this is going in my, on in my mind. If I give it a couple of days, I'll, I'll, I'll be all right again, just like I was a couple of weeks ago when it happened. Um, but what I will say though, is, is if, is if you are suffering with anything, and that one friend always says, you can message me, you can message me, make sure you fucking message them and just say, I'm feeling a bit shit. You know, it, 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 I'm fine, I just feel a bit shit. And just by yeah. saying that, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a little bit of boost inside. It, it's, it's, it's a bit weird. Um, Tim says, night all, all the best, best you, best, all the best. Uh, see you two at Barnsley, the Barnsley yeah, show. Yeah. Night, Tim. Take care. I won't see you in Barnsley because I'm not going. <laughs> but I will yeah, see you. Yeah, I get show. that, Osman. Osman said he's been on the receiving end uh, with his parents, but can't say I didn't deserve it. Oh yeah, there, there was there was one time, mate. My stepdad were in the street and he shouted at me on my little push bike, and I turned around and I went, "Fuck off!" I was about nine. I was caught. I said, "Fuck off!" I think I called him a twat or something. I got payback twice because it was. Remember the old BMXs with the metal pedals? <laughs> that spun round, twatted me in the shin. And when I got home, I got a twat round the ear and round the arse. <laughs> <laughs> People say, I think, you know, we got to think these, it, it were different times back then as well. You know, there was oh, yeah. a sense of authority for, um, for kids, which unfortunately is no longer with us. You know, there is no authority for kids anymore. And um, the no downside, not, the not down, a lot of are. there's no fear. No, the downside is now that we are we are creating a society that has no um, no sense of um, position anymore. Aaron, you said, do you agree? But the last comment of yours I can see, or are you in any autism aware awareness groups? Um. What we'll say is, is this channel 100% supports autism, mental health, and all the rest of it because I suffer a little bit. Um, our five year old is autistic. A lot of people that watch are either um, affected by autism or somebody in their family is affected by autism. And I always mention it just to get it out there a little bit more as well. And there's a lot of people in the hobby that are also on the autistic spectrum somewhere. But to be honest, if every single one of us admitted it, we, we, we're all on that spectrum at some point, I would have thought. You know? It, it's, it's, it's all part of it. Um, I was I was a little bit disappointed because the, the, the area of the country I co actually come from is Nuneaton, which is, which is next door to Coventry, and it's Warwickshire. And I fucking hated that councillor literally turning around and going, where's all this autism and ADHD coming from? And they said it must be something in the water. Mm -hmm. I was embarrassed to say, I was embarrassed to admit coming from Warwickshire at that point. I was like, you for fucking real, you fucking dickhead. <laughs> the bloke looked about 70 and I was thinking, in your lifetime, have you not seen it where people used to, like when my, nan, when my nan's age, when you know when she would have been a kid, autism, autistic kids, disabled kids would have been fucking locked away somewhere. You absolute arrogant dickhead. And it's only now that people are going autism is completely fine that we we feel free to be able to come out of the house with autistic children with mental health and everything else how have you not seen that and he's still not resigned i think it, he's um it pissed me off that did it's it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's a really difficult thing isn't it you know it's because it's like um everything's everything we we never hit the middle ground no we never hit the middle ground. If you think back, it's funny, actually. I saw, um, oh, bloody hell, what's her name? Oh, 
Crikey. Oh yeah, he's... Amy take, takes Mac everywhere. We, we we do a Leo, and if if he's not accepted, we we don't go. We just say sorry. We're we're we're, we're not using your establishment. Sorry, but you know, our five five year old swears, and that's part of his autism apparently. Um, and he and he will crawl along the floor pretending to be a cat, and he will scream and he will kick off because he wants to go back home again because that's where he's safe. That's where he feels safe. But you know, I'm in the middle of town, and if if he's on the ground pretending to be a cat, so am I. And I do not give two fucks. <laughs> I do not care what people think when the war passed. If it makes him happy and if I can be part of his magical world, I will definitely try to be. Yeah. His, his, his world's better than ours anyway. <laughs> oh, you, you have to you have to often think that, don't you? I think um with a lot of a lot of people that <laughs> you know suffer with some real bad stuff. I often wonder whether they have a better time. Yeah, exactly, Kate. I was, I was very, very surprised with the amount of support that's actually out there. When you, when you just drop that message, uh, Bastian got an autism question. Is there a born with version and a grown up version, or how is it? Um, yeah, like Amy said, you're born with autism. Um, from my understanding, and I, I don't mean to upset people, I think if from head injuries, I think you can do like, I think it can happen then. But I don't know. I think he's just born. But to be honest, I mean, our five year old is autistic, high functioning ADHD, which is just like, wow, he's got more energy than all of us put together. And now Noah, wow, Noah. <laughs> He's going for all the testing as well. And, and Noah, it's like he's seen his older brother doing everything and he's took it up another level. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I'm 45 and he keeps me young. They both keep me young. <laughs> and I don't know. I don't know how the missus does it all the time. Um, Tron has just put 200 Norwegian kroner onto the chat. Thank you, brother. And says there's just been a big case over here with the mental health. A doctor was sued because he didn't give meds to a person. Um, identified as a mental health patient does my head in. Yep. That's I could do my head in. It really was. It, it was weird because the first time I went to the doctors, he was like, he said to me, he says, oh, you got depression, anxiety. Um, the depression is um, circumstantial and clinical. The clinical is a chemical imbalance. And then I remember going back five years later and they were like, oh, well, actually, you've got a complex uh, personality disorder as well as um, BPD. And I was like, the fuck? And they gave me loads That's of drugs cool. to take and I felt like a zombie. So like I said, I ended up taking harder drugs and all the rest of it still and in the end, gave it all up and went, what, what my name's Scott and I'm a little bit weird. And that's yeah. that. Uh, and, and to hell with I it. They, <laughs> I think, though, in... Um, I just in, embraced what? it, no. I think in a lot of respects, though, I think the doctors are at fault, and they have been for the last 30-odd years, you know, because now it's it comes back to what we were saying before, where um, I I get a little bit frustrated with it all because it's it's like they, they must – everything must have a label. Yeah, that you know? pisses me off as well. You know, and it's like – so the doctors aren't helping because they'll sit there and they'll go, oh, you got this, 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 and this, you know. But then you turn around and you say to them, well, explain to me what actually is that. And they go, hang on a minute, I'll just Google it. And they Google it, and then they come back and tell you what it's all about. And you're like, so you've not actually got any fucking idea of what you just told me I've got or anything else because you're not a specialist, you're not anything. You're a general GP. And, you know, I, I, I haven't bothered with doctors for most of my life because whenever I go, and I had this last year, I went in and I just said, I need a checkup because I'm, I feel tired all the time. You know, I'm, I feel a bit lethargic, which isn't me, you know. And he literally went on bloody Google in front of me. And I was like, are you seriously? I've waited three weeks for this fucking appointment, and you're going <laughs> to Google it? <laughs> I went off my head. I was like, do you know what? I said, you lot are a shower of shit. Fucking shower. And I, and I left. I was fucking furious. And um, mine, mine was from um, psychiatrists that I got the diagnosis, and they didn't fucking Google it. Because I, I would have been like you. I would have been... I am putting a complaint about you. You do not know your shit. You shouldn't have to Google anybody's fucking symptoms. Don't. 
Most of them don't. And this is the problem. All they're interested in is giving you a label, getting you out and getting the next one in, you know. And it is true what, um, like we've seen with different people that have said, that the... Um, yeah, right. exactly. If you go back... Yeah, Tony. If you go back 30, 40 years, right, there wasn't, there wasn't the amount of problems that there is now. So, like, I can remember when I was in school, you'd get the, the odd two, three people in the year that were slower than everybody else. And they were like, we used to call them the special kids, you know, because they'd have, like, the after school or they'd go to a special lesson. Well, that's, because, that's, what, that's what schools called them back then. Yeah, that's what it was. So, and, and your parents would tell you that when, when you walk past a certain school, they'll be, oh, that's a special school for the special kids. Yeah. And that, that's literally, that's the information that you got as a kid. That is exactly it. But the point I'm making is, is that it's an interesting thing when you think about it, but there was far less of it then than what there is now. So the, the question is, why? It's like mental health. You know, there was mental health problems back when I was a kid, but you never it was, saw it to the extremes that we see it now. So it's, I don't believe it's because we're more aware. I think there's a, I think there's a couple of things. I think, I think people feel more comfortable in coming forward instead of bottling things up. The old English, you know, stiff upper lip and everything. I, I, I also think that instead of hiding children and young adults away from the world that are, that, are, that are autistic or severely disabled and everything we can go into society and know that it's more accepted and we're not going to get looked down upon for having a child with autism or whatever um but then also i think with severe disabilities i think mobility shops are more accessible nowadays and there's more out there like in, in, in means of transport um, I think that's why there's, there's more coming forward. I think when it, when you look at mental health, I think depression and anxiety, I think 50% of that is caused by the modern day society um, work, wanting more out of you all, all the time, all the time. They want more and more and more. You're not working quick enough. Why are you not working quick enough? Let's have a disciplinary, right? You get this done by this time next week or having another disciplinary. So then you're going home like, my God, I'm going to lose the house. I'm going to lose this, going to lose that. I'm going to get divorced. You go down the doctors with depression, anxiety. Um, I think there's a lot more pressure on individuals nowadays than there's, there's ever been. But then the other thing is how often, Dave, because um, you're very you know, active on Facebook, YouTube and everything else, how, how often do you put your phone down and turn the TV off and just relax? Because yeah. I, I, I hardly ever fucking do it. Yeah, and I think having that, having that phone in your face, I mean, I know you guys are watching us on probably on a lot of you's on phones and stuff like that. Um, but how, how often do you turn off from technology? Because I remember as a kid, the only real thing I worried about was getting a kicking off my dad if I was naughty. I never worried about, oh, what's on, what's on Facebook? What are these arguing about? Oh, my God, these are going to kill each other. Oh, what's this person? Oh, fucking hell, they're whinging as well. It's it was we go over the park and have a game of football. We wouldn't worry about the internet or no. phones or breaking your phone or dropping your phone or, or, or having it stolen, you know, cause we just simply didn't have them. It's interesting. We... Yeah. It's, it's interesting how, how uh, society affects us without knowing it. Um, oh, camera lady went through a stage where um, she got hooked on um, uh, like the housewives of bloody, New York and all this sort of stuff. You know the series? Yeah. Have you seen them? No, I haven't seen them myself. Oh, they, they do them from all over the world, different ones. And there's, there's a couple of American ones, and then they've done one in Cheshire as well. And she got well into them. So to the point where, like, you know, we sit down to have dinner, it would be on the telly. And I'm not kidding you. we done it once. We sat down and we watched some. And I ended up, I had to say to her, like, you know, I can't I can't be watching it. It made me so depressed. And I'm not someone who really suffers with depression to the point where it affects me, but that made me really depressed to the point where 
It literally was. Every time you were watching it, all they were doing was arguing. I mean, it's just constant arguing. And it and it literally, it, I found it so depressing. But you sort of look at that and you think that's just one thing in life that that managed to have that that strong effect. You know, it's I can't I can't watch it. Literally, I cannot watch it. It affects me that bad. That I it, and it's it's it's. It's, it's constant confrontation. You know, they're constantly bitching and arguing with one another. You know, they can't do anything without falling out. So they're always, always arguing. And I even said to her, I said, how the hell can you find this relaxing? You just watch an hour of an argument. And then when it goes to the next one, we're still arguing about the same thing. You know? <laughs> and it's like, you've watched these back to back all afternoon. And know? they're still arguing. And they're still arguing about the same crap. And then what they do is, is you've got an hour-long program that keeps jumping back. So if you actually broke it down, you've got a 15-minute program that they dragged out for an hour. And all it was was arguing. And I couldn't, in the end, we got to a point in the end, I was, if I walked in and that was on, I'd either walk out or I'd say, well, you need to turn it over. Because I, I just cannot listen to that. It was so, so depressing. And I sort of think... That is just a little snippet of our society today. You know, I can't be bothered with confrontation. You know, no. I've had all that. I've done all that, you know, and I'm just sort of like, do you know what? Life is way too short. I, I don't need that crap. It's amazing because you put yourself on YouTube and then somebody, somebody's in an argument with somebody else and then they're trying to get you involved by messaging you. And I'm like, no, no, not happening. No. Um, for me, it's very much if. If you guys stop arguing, the hobby suddenly becomes a lot better. And nine times out of ten, you look at the argument, and it's very real for those two people, but you just literally look, step back and you just see an ego and an ego trying to do this. And yeah. it's like, right, stop doing this and try doing this, and then you'll both go like this, you know? Yeah. I mean, I've had, it, uh, I've, I've had people sort of like, I'm lucky. On, on my channel, I've I've had very, very little, and I mean negligible um, occurrences where anyone sort of like got too too wound up about anything. Uh, I think once or twice in three years, um, yep. and it's and it's literally, you know, I always say to everyone, you know, you, you're all entitled to your own opinion. I'm not telling you anything. I'm just sharing something that you know. If you want to take it on, you take it on. If you don't, you don't. It's, it doesn't make any difference to me, really. But you know, let's not let's not get into a full blown plea and row about it. It's not that important. It really isn't that important. Nothing I do is that important that you should get so upset that you're going to spend your every waking moment trying to have a row about it. You know, it's just not that important. You know, be you. I think, I think some people just need to bloody you know grow up and, and grab a little piece of reality and. Uh, and, and get on with what what is important you know i think i mean i say this quite a lot i think arguments in the hobby i think what people need to remember is that sooner or later the government will turn around and say right this group of spiders you can't have anymore we're not allowing them into the country and while everybody's divided everybody's going to make a little group here and a little group there and a little group here and these groups are going to go oh we need somebody to do this this and this Whereas if we're all together, we could all stand as one and say say to the government, fuck you, we want these, and then we get listened to. Or we're divided, we haven't got that power to, to express that. Um, and, you know, you, you, it, 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 it will happen, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think, it, yeah, eventually. You know, it has done with everything. You know, it's, it's a shame. I mean, some of the things that I used to be involved with are no longer, you know, available anymore. Yeah, you, know, you just can't do it anymore. Um, well, like you, or you'll see communities being built, and and they're an amazing community. And then one will go, oh, they'll they'll do something and have a little tantrum and fuck off, and then then they'll make up another one. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And then from there, somebody else will make up another one and another one and another one. We really it should just be the one big community, you know, like going together as as a hobby. But then that's um, where. That, it, that, that's where we as individuals can make a difference in the, in the fact that you know 
He's like, I, I have pretty much a, a, like a zero tolerance on, on the channel. Um, I don't, I, I, I won't have people being horrible to one another. Um, and it's very rare we ever see it, to be fair. But on the odd occasion that it has popped up or someone's just been a bit derogative towards someone else, I literally just delete them. You know, there is no messing about. There's no, there's no sort of thing. I literally just delete the comment. And then if they come back and, you know, try and reawaken it again, then I'll delete them. You know, it's, it's that simple. I've, I've got no time for it. And it's, um, I'm, so I'm, I'm lucky really. In our I've chat. Had strange things going on. Like I had some horrible comments saying Scott's inverts and all everybody associated with him is a bully, blah de blah de blah. But that that wasn't an account. That was a made up account. Um but the strange thing is I a hundred percent know who it was because their real account's now in the comments right now. And it, it's like, do you know what? I understand. I understand where it came from and, I, and I, I'll forgive you a hundred percent. So do not worry. Um, but stuff like that drives me insane. I think, why, why, why set up a separate account just to go trolling? Yeah, it's just, it's just, it, it's just one of them. I think, um, I don't know. I think it, it's like the whole, the whole thing, that the whole aspect of the hobby, everything, all the whole part of it. I, I can't be, I can't be bothered with any of that, that side of it. Doesn't doesn't interest me in the slightest. I'm I'm not interested. I'm I've always been more of a, you know, if you're man enough to come and knock on my door and tell me to my face, then I'll listen to you. But if you ain't man enough to do that, you're of no interest to me whatsoever. I couldn't give a damn. I don't care. I care, you know? I care about a lot of people. The only people that I'm going to get in a full or full scale argument with um, to defend them is literally my family. Um, yeah nowadays uh that's that's when i just see red and i don't know yeah but the build the builders next door they spoke to the wife like she was a piece of shit fuck me they shit themselves when i come home from work <laughs> yeah three of them the one of them and i said to him i said go get that fucking cunt out here now and he went that's my dad i said do not get it for shit mate go get that fucking cunt out here now and he did he came out and his two sons were like both on his shoulders like ear and ear so mm. i had to go at him and I said, look, I said, you ever knock my door and speak to my wife like she's shit again. I said, you will not be walking home. Put it that way. And his son went, what are you going to do about it? And I went, let's fucking go now. And he went, no. And I said, shut the fuck up, man. He just, he just shriveled up like this. Yeah. So there was three of them against me. But when it comes to the wife and the kids, I don't, it, could, it could have been 100 people. I'm like, I'm still very, very, very much like, she, you know, she's my everything, mate. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's how it is. Um, that's how I it should. Be. I can't control it. Sorry, but tough that's shit. Yeah, that, that's how it should be. But you can sort of, you can, um, you, yeah, you, awesome. can, you can have a little bit of that can literally overflow into what you're doing, like on on YouTube and on Facebook and all these things. You know, I don't understand these people that that get riled into things and then you know, and then you see the posts going up, don't you? Oh, you know, this one said that. This one's done this. This one's done that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, you just think you could have you could have knocked this on the head a long time ago, Dave. If I knew you, you, where you lived, I would come knock on your door with a megaphone and shout, "Jumping spiders are not boring." I keep getting like the odd message or or the comment in lives going, "What do you think to these jumping spiders, Scott?" And I'm like, oh, "I haven't got any. I don't keep." <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I, I think it was probably one of your lives when I sat well, there and said, no, I think they're boring. <laughs> it was, yeah. Early last year. Yeah. I think I said at the time, this is going to get me into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been I've never been forgiven for that. <laughs> yeah, never been forgiven. Jumping spiders are wicked. I'm, I'm not a fan of, like... And um, this is just an opinion. It's, I'm not criticising anybody. But when when they do the the enclosures and there's astroturf and then there's like a little fairy hut and there's a little mushroom, <laughs> there's a little football for them to play with. And I'm like, I don't I don't understand it. I'm I'm very much like very much like Dave, very naturalistic setups. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, uh, I think, um, yeah. I I always look. I always look at it, and I just think. You know, Peter, each, can, we, can you do a jump in spider care video? <laughs> I can. I can do. I can do one of them for you now, if you like. You can do a jumping spider care video. <laughs> I'll give you one one golden bit of advice. Give it to someone who cares. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best care I can give. <laughs> is give it. Dave, I've, just, I've just checked your channel. You're you're, you're fast approaching sixty. That no fifty. No forty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, unfortunately, I think it's. I mean, it's the same in it. It's like it's it's like with the brackies, you know. They they don't do it for me really. The um, I play around with them and bits and pieces, but yeah, they don't really do it for me. It'd be pretty boring if we were all into the same stuff. What you got in there? A lot, but look, at it. that is a Dumacola. So it's a social spiders, but if you can see that one, yeah, I see that. They're actually they, they were all up the top here. From the uh, from the Taunton show, and now they've started coming down. And as I look, there's one there. One's just gone down to the floor, and I was like, "Oh, they're moving." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, interesting thing, isn't they? Yeah. Yeah, they are cool. Right, I'm going to have to bloody make a move. You seen the time? Oh, Twenty to twelve. Well, you oh, said no. let's do it on a Friday because you oh, know it's not a school night because it's in the week. I weren't, get off, I, weren't, I weren't expecting to be travelling halfway across the country tomorrow morning. Oh, but the Is it uh, sp spider related or? Yeah, yeah, it's always spider related. <laughs> yeah, I'm related. We're going on this side of the country because I found this lovely restaurant. We've just got to make a stop on the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pick up some more spiders, uh, Eric. Those social spiders, are they easy to get your hands on? Um, I got mine from the spider shop in a – I was using – the Scots Inverts gets everybody 5% off on on the on the spider shop. But at the same time, I get 5% of the store credit. So it worked up to about £112. So I was like, right, yeah, that's a £100 mystery box. And those were in it. Um, so the spider shop do sell them. I already had three, so I've added those three to it now. So there's 14 in there. Um, but they're £8 each, so I did all right there. And I fucking love them. I absolutely love them. Again, you've got the communals with the Balfour with the tarantulas. But when, when you move over to the true spiders and you find you can keep social spiders together, again, watching those guys interact with each other and prey. Is slightly yeah. different to the Balfouris, and it's something else. Is that these are always that they, they are still quite a lot, but they're always up to something, they're always doing something. Whether it's like tapping on the web to another female, and the other female taps slightly back, but you have to, you're not going to see it, you have to put your phone up and then magnify them so literally they, they go from being this, this small to being about this big. And you yeah. can see the tiny, tiniest of vibrations. So the, the, in my eyes, that's them talking to each other. And that's what's got me fascinated with those. And I know Poppy, who was in chat earlier, she's got an egg sack of them. And I'm really hoping one of these pops male and we get an egg sack. Because the Dumicola, they're the ones that absolutely cover all the bushes in webbing. And you see billions of them all over the place quite famously the, the the normally the little video of them comes around once or twice a year and it goes viral again so i'm really hoping that out of those 13 15 sorry that are in there one of them's male he impregnates all the others and then suddenly i have a shitload which i could put in a huge exo terror and they web up like crazy and i can sit and watch those guys as well you know but the, yeah. the spider shop had them last. Um, I don't know if they've still got them on the A Gavs tarantulas. I don't know if they've still got them on the website, if they're sold out of them all or what. But you can there's, there's no harm in dropping them a message to see if they haven't got them, if, when, if and when they're going to get them in again. Good night, Aaron. Good night, Aaron. So. Good evening, yeah, Gav. You go. <laughs> You're a bit late to the show. We're just about close. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Gareth. We, we started at eight, but one of them. 
One of them. Put a uh, harmonic on as well. I will say though, um, now we've hit ten k, we're gonna do um, a bit of a giveaway. That's for sure. I'm gonna contact us, contact a few of the sellers and stuff like that. See if they'll come and join in on it. Um, but that'll probably be out in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, after oh, I hope the diversities from you mature soon, Scott, so I can breed them. Yeah, one more malt in it, Osman. One more malt. But like I said, the diversities, fuck me. It was a breeding project that I bought. And I rehoused the male, not a problem. Rehoused the female, and the female just disappeared. Is she on a sack, is she? No, 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 no. Oh. Um, he, he was he was only small at the time, and so was she. But she come flying out of the enclosure, and I lost her in the house, and I've never seen her since. Oh. And that was about two years ago. Um, so I've had the male all this time and eventually it's now a subadult. Osman's got the female, so I was like, Yeah, see what you can do. Yeah. You know well, what I mean? Uh, one I of them. Paired mine, paired mine twice recently. Oh so I've got two fe two females that have been paired up. So hopefully Yeah, I've bred them a few times. They they're, they're normally they they're quite frustrating because they disappear for a long time. And I've, with them, I've always let them hash them out themselves. Oh, I've, I've took to the took to the stance of leaving the females on their egg sacs now. The summer pay of some They're she, all good. Ones. She she did well. She she paired. She molted. So I got another male. She paired. She she ate, she ate them eventually, which I don't mind because. I, I mean, I'll upset people when I say this, but the males are there to pair and then supply nutrients to the female, no matter how you look on it. That's what happens in the wild. So I'll try and recreate that if it's my male with the females here. But she she paired again, ate him, and then molted. And then I thought nothing more of it. I thought, oh, well, we'll get another male eventually. No worries. Not, not in a rush. And she only went and dropped a fucking egg sac, and they're all fertile. That's no. after a malt. So she carried the sperm through the malt, which was just like mind blow really? for me at the time. Fucking Chris, that's what true spiders do, though. I was like, we were literally, it was when Luke was coming here to pick me up and we were going off to the beavers to do um, like a talk and, t and take some spiders and some roaches and stuff to show the beavers and the scouts. Um, and Tara was like, Scott, I'm like, yeah, Tara's my wife, if you don't know. Um, and then she said, I thought that spider, that female one, molted. I went, yeah, she did. She says, well, what are all these? And there was, there was like 10 or 10, 12 slings climbing over the enclosure. And I looked and I was like, what the fuck? And I carried on feeding her because I didn't know. So I was still feeding her weekly. And she was coming up, munching, munching roaches and fucking off back down again. And I got her out. And then we had all these, all these Amernia slings, like full of slings, that she was like literally at the bottom of the borough, bottom of the court bark. They were all there, and I was like, "How? Are you sure How? that wasn't an old malt that you found in there?" No, no, definitely not. No, a hundred percent, no old malt. No, no. That sounds very weird. I've never heard of that before. It was very, very, very fresh when I found it. Wow, um, and obviously she she munched the mail, and I was like, I said, I mean, I said to Luke, I said this is just impossible, and Luke said he said I've heard of it before with the Mernia, he said, but you can never rule anything out with spiders, no. and I went, I says how, I went because you know you no amy you've got the other one you got this you had the large uh juvenile slash subadult female didn't you and i was saying to lucas i don't don't get it I don't understand this and he went well we don't know everything about spiders i was like yeah i know but how how can a female carry the sperm through a molt process mm. because it discards the sperm with it when when they molt and it just i don't know something went on with that female where, where she was able to do it and i was like wow but we paired her up recently again 
and she had another egg sack. And what happened was she didn't I think she must have munched a bit of it. I don't know what had gone on, but she kicked well dumped the egg sack, sorry, at the front of the enclosure and it had gone from being a white big ball to being a tiny wet mess. So I don't oh, know if there were, I don't know if if it was infertile or, or if she tried eating it and then discarded it or what was going on. Um, oh, that's a weird one, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the Germani slings, they were left with the female. Oh, really? Um, the Hattie Hattie, Hattie Hattie was left with the female, although that was, like I said earlier, that was a pain to get them out afterwards. Um, I don't mind that, though. I could see why people pull an egg sack and then incubate it, but I'd just rather see what the females do, and everything seems to be stronger when it's left with the female. Yeah, I think the... Um, um, and I got carried on feeding the oh, Hattie Hattie while, while, she was, uh, while she had the egg sack as well. I carried on feeding her, and she was, she was still eating with the egg sack. Hmm. Uh, well, I've, got, I've actually got... Um... You saying that I've I've got a skeleton leg, Emurinus. Yeah, and uh, she produced an egg sac, and um, I found it. So and I, and I was pretty sure it was it was fresh. So she'd only had it like maybe a day or two, and um, and then about three four days later, I came in in the morning and she was outside at the mouth of the burrow. Yep. I was like, oh, that that doesn't look very good. No egg sac gone. Yeah. following day she's back up mouth of the burrow and i was like, oh bloody hell so then um i think it was that was like on the tuesday then at the weekend i started to go through some of my spiders to check to see if some of my parents if, if any of them had dropped so i go through them all i found my electric blue had dropped a sack so she's on one and then i thought oh i'll take the opportunity i'll just have a look at this emurinus and see what's going on pulled it off she's still got the sack so I was like, oh, so then now I think most mornings I come in and she's out at the mouth of the burrow, but she goes down and looks after the sack during the daytime. No problem. So uh, the last couple of times I've thrown a few red runners in there yep. because they're, they're nice active. One. They're active. Yeah. And she's grabbed them both and she's had them. Yep. So she's, she's feeding as well, but she's doing this set. Now in the past, she's, she's been a bugger for eating her sacks. And uh, so we've changed the whole thing now. So I'm just going to keep feeding her now and just keep going. And, uh, yeah, and just see what happens. But it's, um, yeah, it's an interesting thing that she often leaves it. But I've had I've had other spiders where they've left the sack in and come out and had a drink. And, nice, Sarah. And gone and had bits and pieces as well. Yeah. I'm gonna, I think in, going, going forward, especially after the Amurnia and the Hattie Hattie and the Germani, I think if a spider's an egg sack, I'm still going to offer food and see what happens. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you because because it's, it's, so. it's we, almost like they have an egg sack and then it's like, oh shit, you have to cover it up. You have to put it in the corner, leave it for the fuck alone, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, they had the egg sack with all the noise that's normally going on in here. And they had yeah. the egg sack with me fucking around with them all the time anyway. So they already know that it's safe. So why the fuck are they going to eat it just because, you know, you've left the light on or something? It might yeah. be like, it don't make no sense because they feel safe enough to drop the sack. Yeah, I think it's um, it's a it's a it's a bit of a mixture of things. I think um, I mean I, I tend to be a little bit more careful around them if I know they've got a sack. But um, but yeah, I think there's a lot to be said for for what you're saying. You know, they do they do go ahead and do their own thing. But then. Like you were saying saying earlier, it's a lot of old information. So the old information does say, leave them alone, don't feed them, blah de blah de blah When you take the egg sack off them, they're going to be dehydrated and they're going to they're going to be hungry. They're going to look shabby, and that's like, oh yeah, because you've not been feeding them. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's funny actually because I was talking to um, I think it was Ian the other day when he came round, and we were talking about breeding and that. And um, I, I said to him, most of my females are in the same condition when they when they finish as what they are when they went in. You know, they've maintained that thing. But but then I keep them in that optimum thing anyway. So, yeah. you know, a, a month going without food isn't going to decimate a spider. No. Nowhere near. So, um, you know, you can get away with a lot. 
but yeah, there's um, there's there's, there's often there's there's different thoughts of play with all of them. Yeah. Right, I am going to have to call it a day, my friend. I mean, eight minutes yeah. to twelve. I know, bloody hell! Um, I, I, I said to her, I said I'll be done by ten o'clock. I need to get early night. Can you? <laughs> Tell camera lady, thank you very, very much for releasing you for so long. Really, really do appreciate it. Um, and Danielle popping around, I thought I was fucking brilliant. They're still sitting down there. Oh, that... yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably. No, uh, yeah, uh, we're um, we, we will we will uh, we'll sort out another anyway. Oh, All right, no out. worries. Sounds good yeah, to me. Be some cool bits, I mean, uh. What they got in there? Yeah, I think people are all there's there's few of them are disappearing off the bed now anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this time of night, uh, transfer day night. All thanks for an amazing live. Uh, really appreciate it. There was a hell of a lot of comments just just complimenting you, Dave. I mean, like so many, it was unreal. Yeah, you. I think there's a lot of comments going. If we went for Dave, we'd be in spiders and. I wouldn't have changed this. Wouldn't use masks. Just everything. It was. It was the delight to read as as the, as the other questions were coming through. Do you know what I mean? I don't. I don't. I don't really look at them as we're talking away. To be fair, I catch bits and pieces. Uh, Raphael says dinner time in Canada. Oh, oh, nom nom nom. Yeah, you can make me bloody angry now. Yeah, yeah. Don't mention food. <laughs> no. no. Quick, a quick drink. Yeah, yeah. Me. yeah me, me and Dave are addicted to food just as much as we're addicted to spiders. I tell you that. I'll <laughs> <laughs> be a good meal, can you? No, you certainly can't. <laughs> a good meal or two. <laughs> Bugle oh. says, We love you, Dave. Yay. Um, oh, Mark, A8 converter, man. I can't, I can't, can't even express how much that dude's job done for me in the channel over the years. Honestly, a lot of it's private. He's such a fucking amazing guy. He's just donated uh, five channel memberships, which has gone to Moon Over Miami, the Critter Den. It's gone to Michael Taylor. It's gone to Charlotte Smith's Plants and Pythons. And it's gone to the Scouser as well. Great stream. Been watching from the shadows. Thank you, Mark. Um, I think Victoria's probably in bed, but I'll still say hello, Victoria, because we love her. Yeah. Um, so those gifted channel memberships as 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 long as you have the channel membership for you will also get 15 percent off at spa spiders um i do channel member only lives um every now and again i'm actually due to do one because i haven't done one this year so i need to get one done and i do a release the odd video for channel members only as well which is more just talking about the crap that i don't normally talk about on the normal videos <laughs> but yeah <laughs> but it, it it goes a long way here. I'll put it that way. <laughs> See, there's so, and, much, um, there's so much more you've got to do when you do these channel memberships. I, I, I struggle with what I'm doing now. I think I think people just want to support Dave because Dave's cool as fuck. And we all want to see Dave get this, get the building done in the back garden and all the You're rest not the of only it. One. I want to see that, it get done at all. And people in the comments tonight were literally asking you to start the channel membership because they're quite happy with do what you're doing. And they yeah. want to support a bit more. We'll have to. We'll have to look into it. We'll have to. We'll have to make a concerted effort I, and uh, see what we can I, do. I, the, one of the one of the things that I want to do. Uh, well, one of the main plans of having the building done was, hopefully, I can sort of like concentrate full time on my spiders then. But the, um, the one of the things was I wanted to do like workshops. So um, we do proper 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 like you know paid workshops um but you come along for the day and you know and there, and there'll be set set things so like you know might do a workshop on enclosures or a workshop on handling or breeding or whatever it may be you know whatever's relevant at the time and uh, i'm, I'm not be, saying anything but i might book one of those and come down yeah <laughs> yeah yeah why not, why not? <laughs> yeah yeah no i think it's um it's, it's something I'm, I'm i'm really keen to do um and I, I think you know i think it could be fun and you know and i want to just i just want to do something something a bit sort of special so yeah. hold on a minute hold on a minute 
you do realise you're going to have to buy Yorkshire tea bags if these workshops go ahead, because you you can't be offering you know second best tea. Or maybe you could bring your own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you bring it to us, mean, the spiders. I, can't, I could try and keep you here another 20 minutes, but <laughs> I, I, I know you've got a long drive ahead of you in the morning. Dave, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you popping in and, and no having worries. another live again. It's been an absolute delight. Um, we don't get much time at shows, do we, to have a chat? So when, <laughs> when we've got a live together, it's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, I really enjoy them. I mean, this is the only place I do them. So it's like, you know. I, I no, do, I appreciate yeah. that as well, massively. I massively. really do enjoy them. Yeah, I do enjoy um, them. But again, tell camera lady a massive thank you. And, I will and if she's not watching, say to Danielle, thank you for distracting her for the last couple of hours. Appreciate it. <laughs> 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 um again danielle who popped on screen portsmouth tarantulas uh one of dave's very close friends um so we should hopefully see a little bit more danielle in videos in the future and stuff like that who knows oh well, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, throw her a message because i'm sure i'm sure she'd uh, she'd be up for doing a live at some point and she, uh, we've we've done we've done a couple she pops on quite a lot of the open might not as last one she actually came on live while she was at the shop still. Yep. Which mm -hmm. was pretty good. Uh, I mean, I'm like you, Dave. We've had the pleasure of watching that shop literally be opened the first time and then being over the course. It's been a year now. Well, I will, say, what it is. I will say now, um, I was down there last week. I, I need. I did I did take a little bit of footage, and um, I, I'm going to put it up on my, on my Facebook page. Um, but anyone that's sort of in the area or within traveling distance, you know, do go down and have a look because it has changed so much. Um, Daniels and Scott have worked tirelessly, really have, and they transformed the place now. It's a completely different thing to what it used to be. So um, it's, a, it's a real proper shop and everything now. It's, it's, it's got a full on thing. It's really, really smart. I'm going to put the, a, a video up that I, little took, I took a little bit of video while I was there. And um, yeah. Get down there and support it. Have a look. And, um, yeah, I mean, you don't have to just buy online. You can go visit the shop. And then, also, you know, if, you, if you can't get down to Portsmouth, hey, where, Scott. Where, hey, up, hey, up. where she's at, then they are on TikTok. He's Port drinking all my beer. Good on him. Yeah. Portsmouth Tarantulas on TikTok. If you can't get down to the shop, go <laughs> come up with, a, with a follow. Dave's Pub. <laughs> Dave's pop. <laughs> what are you drinking on my doom bar? No, I hope you've uh, hope you've uh, saved him a few. <laughs> no, Kenny drank it all. <laughs> <laughs> He's done a lot, I bet. <laughs> the fuckers, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame me. It weren't me keeping you on here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure thought. I'm never doing it again. <laughs> Um, for you guys that have been watching, if you've been here from the start, thank you for watching a couple of old guys talk crap about spiders all night. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, no, again, no, really again, cool. we'll, we'll we'll try and convince Dave to pop on another live in the future for sure. Um, I am normally, if you're new to the channel, I am normally live on a Tuesday. Um, we swap over to a Friday because um, it's a school night for Dave, a Tuesday. He has to get up well early on a Wednesday for work. So we know this time next week it will be it'll be Chris's zoo on wheels will be live doing all those pairings that you mentioned earlier. That will be starting at eight o'clock. Um I haven't got anything actually booked for Tuesday of next week, so I'm gonna try and get something organized over the weekend. Um, but thank you everybody so so much for staying and watching and all the rest of it, dropping likes and putting the the beautiful comments that you guys have done into the into the comment section tonight has been amazing. Thank you so so much. Um, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Really, really, Good really, really appreciate it. But uh, but yeah, Dave obviously wants to go party with Scott and uh, Danielle. So we'll see you the day today. I've got another. I'll have a video coming out on Monday. When's your next video coming out, Dave? Monday. Monday. What Monday time? Monday and Thursday. Six six in the morning. Oh, I say I'll do Monday and Thursday, but it's seven at night. 
<laughs> six o'clock in the morning might go out. Oh, and uh, do, do you know, are you know you're going to say what Mondays is about, or is it going to be a surprise? It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> have you recorded? Have you recorded yours yet, or? Uh, no, um, I've got plans on what I want to do. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm still at that stage where I'm sort of clamouring. Before in the old days, I used to get myself well in front, and I could yeah, I away, do stuff, but. Um, yeah, I'm so behind at the moment. It's just unreal. There's too much going on. There's, I, uh, I'll, I walk in here on a Sunday and go, what can I film? And yeah. then I'll go, right, yeah, I'll do that video now today because that's there and this is there. And, yeah, that, that's that's me. Yeah. Yeah, now we're um, – now I'm probably – we're probably going to um, – I'm thinking, I'm thinking about another look at the funnel webs. So we'll, we'll probably do a video on them. Oh, nice. On uh, so they, there's some of them need rehousing. I want to step them up, get them ready for their like breeding breeding tanks and stuff. So um, yeah, we'll probably have a have a little look at them. Awesome, awesome. Um, yeah. Again, Dave, thank you so much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. <laughs> no, no, no worries at all, my friend. It's been nice brilliant. Time. Thank you. All right, buddy. Nice uh, one. Uh, night, yeah. night, Dave. Night, everybody. Night, Take everybody. care. Good night. Ta-da. <laughs> Where we go?